hope it has sound. If not, this is embarrassing. Tell us your first name. Nadia. Now your surname. Is that my last name? Fun. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> I don't know how to spell it. Fun. Okay. <laughs> when the night comes. Ooh. Spooky time. Spooky time. Spooky time. Please find your mission information and all other relevant documents and clothes. Once the information has been digest digested, why am I eating the paperwork? I arrive in Lumeris at dusk, hence the moon icon. I'm a hunter. <laughs> I've been caught here by Lieutenant Lieutenant General. I was gonna say Lieutenant General, and it's my duty, my purpose to protect humanity from those creatures that go bump in the night. Since when? Am I getting paid enough for this? I was the most skilled hunter general in my previous time. Was, of course I was, I have to be, I'm the main character. I pushed the weathered wooden door open in the light of the tinkle of the bell. That's not correct. I hear footsteps and turn to find their own. I'm taken aback by the figure that appears from behind a well, behind a pair of well-placed curtains that were, oh my gosh, I can't talk. Ah! I was just closing up, but can I help you? Hey! Sorry I like barge into your house. Are you the new hunter? Some would say. Or at least that's what my paperwork says. Is it that obvious? <laughs> he returns my smile and I can't help but feel welcome. At home even. Girl, you just met this guy. What do you mean? Uh, just a little. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you. The town has been alight with gossip about you this week, you know. My name is Ezra, by the way. I'm- no. It's nice to meet you, Ezra. Did anyone happen to tell you not to wander the streets when darkness falls? No. As capable as I'm sure you are, it's not advised. Especially these days. Hey, okay, well, no one sent me the memo, so sorry, I did not. I was not aware. I shake my head. They're still a little out of sorts from the long journey. Then, much to my embarrassment, my stomach decides to grumble loudly. Is he not gonna say anything? How rude of me. You must be starving. Take a seat in the back room. I'll quickly fix you up something. Bro, you don't have to do that. I literally just need to know where the tavern is. I, I'm imposing. You were lacking up. Ezra fills an old steel kettle and pops it on the stove, igniting the stubborn burner with a grunt before he turns and offers me a smile. I'm just going to pop upstairs and get you some blankets. I really do insist you stay until morning. <laughs> you must be exhausted, and I'd hate to send you out into the Why? darkness knowing... But I don't- well, knowing what? Can you tell me what's going on? Disappears up a narrow staircase, but my curiosity instantly gets the better of me. A solidarity candle burns upon the countertop. Colorful, magical, little lights hanging from various picture frames and shelves, as well as abundance of luscious green plants. I didn't understand a word of what I just said. Some of the pages are covered in elegant looping script, and the others are filled with loving, tendered portraits. I tentatively reach for one of the sketches at the top of the pile, but a loud creak startles me. I turn, as alert as I've always been taught to be, as my finger edges toward my weapons. The hairs on the back of my neck stand on the and I immediately know that there's a creature nearby. That's when I see them. A pair of glowing, fierce, golden eyes peeking up at me from a previously hidden hatch in the floorboards. What? Before I can even think about defending myself. Hello? I'm pinned to the wall by a <laughs> What? Oh my gosh, everyone, there's a vampire! Who the hell are you? Where is Ezra? He went upstairs? I his lips curl into a snarl, affording me what feels like an incredibly pointed view of a set of long, sharp fangs. Who did your fade, brother? Cause it does not look great. If I hadn't already clocked his deathly pallor, there'd be no second guessing what kind of creature I'm dealing with here. Vampire. Okay. I'm gonna assume he's worried about Ezra, considering he was in this man's floorboards for some freaking reason. Ezra's fine. I swear it. Something that looks a lot like relief settles upon his face. I can't help but wonder what a vampire is doing sneaking in. Ezra's home at this hour. If you are playing tricks on me, I'll have your head. Understand? Why would I lie? I don't actually know what's happening. I'm not lying. He's safe. He's upstairs. I tip my chin towards the staircase and hope he'll use his head and seek Ezra out with those impressive senses of his. He takes a step back, but he still doesn't seem to trust me. I don't entirely blame him. I know how he feels. The sound of the kettle whistling as it comes to a boil distracts him, and he visibly relaxes. His gaze quickly darts to the staircase, then back to me. He steps back, the candlelight illuminating his angular face, all sharp lines and hair as black as night. He's otherworldly, obviously attractive in that tall, dark, and dead way. And his left arm is missing from the shoulder down. His left arm? Is that not his left arm? In its place- Oh. Never mind. In its place is an advanced looking prosthetic, flowing what looks like incredibly advanced magic. He catches me looking at it and quirks the scarred brow. Like what you see? Sorry, it's not for sale. I wasn't gonna buy it? I Ezra appears from upstairs, his eyes wide and he surveys the sight before him. Finn? 
What are you doing here? His name's Finn. You're gonna have that kind of attitude with your name being Finn? I... Finn turns to me and dips his head in an apology. I'm sorry about that less than savory introduction, Hunter. You know how you try to Things choke me out? On edge here lately. Yeah, I noticed because you try to choke me out. Sorry, Nadia. You don't need me alarmed. He's an ally. Ally! I swear. Finn's whole demeanor changed the second he laid eyes on Ezra, and I feel any final traces of fear melting away as he steps forward and offers me his hand. The smile that crosses his lip is mischievous, and cold fingers grip my own in a firm handshake when I reach for it's him. It's truly a pleasure to meet you. Thanks. It's nice to meet you too, I guess. His pretty eyes brush over me like a caress, his pupils dilating, and I feel myself swaying, leaning towards him almost unconsciously. There's a soft whisper of muffled thoughts echoing my mind, and I can't quite tell if they belong to me or him. It's soothing. And whatever he's doing grants me the foresight to see he's most certainly is harmless and he bears no ill will towards me. Something tells me he now sees that I'm harmless too. Finnegan, stop that. It's not polite. <gasps> he's a blushy. I've heard of vampires and throwing their victims before a kill, but that felt more like a request to be understood. Like he wanted to show me he can be trusted. Sorry, I'm just checking. He looks at me and her eyes lock. I nod once, appreciating that he cared enough to put me at ease. Then he's grinning again, wickedly. What in the Wattpad is happening right now? So, are you looking forward to becoming a part of this shit? Ow! Ezra elbows him in the ribs, throwing him a stern, pointing glance. And Finn flinches a little too dramatically for a big, scary creature. Do you have any idea what you've gotten yourself into? No, I literally just pulled up. Is it really that bad? It can't be that terrible, can it? Oh. Certainly not been sunshine and roses around here lately. Is this cause the murders? Understatement of the century. I'll figure it out. Whatever it is. My clan and I are at your disposal. Should oh. you require any assistance. Uh, okay, bet! I just got an army now? Psh. I'd definitely like to know how many supposedly good vampires reside in this lun in Lunaris. Lunaris. I hate reading! Finn, Nadia needs to rest. Maybe you should head home. Why was he in your floor? Finn nods, and Ezra follows him as he heads for the hatch. They embrace briefly, and Finn whispers something into Ezra's ear, the witch grinning brightly as he pulls away. Then Finn's warm, golden gaze locks with my own, and he smiles. Be sure to take care. If you ever need anything, just scream, and I'll come running. Okay. I he winks, and my traitorous cheeks threaten to warm at the sight of it. He notices and laughs quietly, a deep, comforting rasp that I could almost certainly find myself getting used to. Of course you could, because he's a vampire, and you think that's hot. Even though we've only just met, I feel like I can trust him. Within the moments of my arrival, I could tell that something about this town is off, and I intend to get the bottom of this mess. It's my job, and I'm paid to do that. I have to live up to my apparently impressive reputation, right? Big reputation! Big reputation! Thank you for letting me stay, Ezra. I'll be out of your hair first thing. I stay fully yawn as Ezra turns to fuss with some blankets. I'm thoroughly looking forward to settling upon the sofa, however tiny it may be. Lily, it's no problem at all. Wouldn't dream of letting well, you that's nice of him. at this hour, especially after that journey. I'll see you in the morning. If you need anything, just shout. Is everyone telling me to yell if I need something? Like, whatever happened to just knocking or saying, hey, after I wake, Ezra eagerly makes me more tea, and I join him in the shop as I prepare to leave. I wait patiently while he deals with what sounds like a particularly difficult customer, doing my best to eavesdrop as I survey the books that line the walls. Most of them are languages I don't understand. There's a strange energy in the air, and my sense is telling me that Ezra's visitor is also of magical origin. You really can't just drop by like this and expect me to have what you need right away. These things take time. That's always your excuse, Ezra. Do you not want me to work hard to save this town? Why he kinda... <laughs> Ezra sighs, apparently not willing to argue, or maybe he knows he'll lose. The tall figure he's bickering- Oh, he's tall? Okay, I'm intrigued. The tall figure he's bickering with turns to look at me, and I'm caught off guard by their piercing eyes, their stare cutting me to my core. They scowl, their lips pursed as they turn on a towering heel, like I have a target on my forehead. Ezra looks like he's about to try and say something to stop them, but they wave dismissively over their shoulders. They come to a snap before me and steal their gaze, staring down and studying me from head to toe. The slow point of drag. Yo, what's up? What's up? You got a problem? Do we got a problem? I register the familiar violet sash that adorns their torso. The very same as mine. Oh! Is this dude a hunter? Do I send arrivals to lovers? Oh! Um. You're my new subordinate. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, Gus? Gus? <laughs> Why did I just get the ick? I just August? Oh, it's August. August D? So this is the infamous Major General Wilhelm that I've assigned to. 
Oh! 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 <laughs> It'll be a true honor to serve under them, despite their apparently icy disposition. Historically, enforcers aren't the friendliest bunch. They live to serve. <laughs> They hold a much higher authority and love to remind us about it. The way Ezra said their name carried a warning, and August scowls at him briefly before turning their attention back to me. I notice how tired they look, and their eyes heavy-lidded, and their skin pale, and they even almost sway where they stand. Apparently, Ezra notices too, a flash of concern across his features as he quickly rushes to gather some ingredients from a locked cabinet. It looks like he's done this before, and seen them like this before. It's just a pleasure to meet you, Enforcer Willahem. I'm- Yes, yes, I know exactly who your arrival has caused quite a stir. They glance over at Ezra, watching as he breaks off a few sprigs from a neatly wrapped bundle of herbs and pops them into the glass vial. <sighs> their foot taps impatiently on the floor, and exasperated scoff falling from their lips as they turn to look at me once again, eyes rolling. What did I do? Is that my fault? You suck at your job, and I have to do it for you. Eh. So tell me. <laughs> Oh, Are you ready to partake in one of the most baffling missions I've come across? Sure, dude. Yes, General. <laughs> I can't do this. Of course, General. I'm looking forward to working with you. They quirk a perfectly sculpted brow, their lips pursed in contemplation. I don't suffer fools, and I certainly don't tolerate tardiness. If you're capable, we'll get along just fine. As August eagerly reached for the vial clutched in Ezra's palm, the witch pulls away and fixes them with a worried gaze. Please stop doing this to yourself. They're pushing you too far and you know it. You're better than this. Ugh, Ezra cares so much. I like that. Ezra surrenders the vial, the vice just... Uh, uh, violet liquid glowing dully as August takes it with a trembling hand. There's always a choice. Remember that. August seems lost for words, but manages to maintain their carefully crafted annoyance. They reach for the door with yet another roll of their eyes, pausing briefly to catch my gaze. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't be late. Okay, we stand outside the shop. The sky bright, but the town somehow seeming inherently gloomy. If you ever need anything, you know where to find me. Yeah, I know. Please don't hesitate to stop by. Okay, you won't get rid of me if you say that. Oh, I wouldn't mind. Ah, he's so cute! I bid him farewell, reluctantly leaving the warmth and safety of the shop behind. Follow the rickety old street signs that point towards the tavern, the place I'll be calling home for the foreseeable future. The tavern is bustling and full of brim with red-faced patrons. I push my way into the bar, and a scowling barmaid rolls her eyes at me as I politely raise my hand to get her attention. Excuse me, um... What? I have a room here. Could I check in, please? Room isn't ready until two. You'll have to get a drink or make yourself skies. Okay, I find myself face to face with a striking, scowling woman who appears to be blocking me entirely on purpose. Hello? So this is the famous hunter that's taking my place then? Uh, am I? You don't look like anything special to me. Come to gloat, have you? Rub it in my face. I don't know who you are. Hello? Do I know you? I'm really sorry. Am I supposed to know who you are? To you. <laughs> I glanced down and noticed the violet sash that slipped around her waist in her simple armor. A hunter too then. Well, you've come to town to take my bloody job. So yes, I should expect you to know exactly who I am. Okay, well, headquarters didn't give me those details, so I don't. Name's Piper. Piper McLean? Oh. And I'll be keeping a damn good eye on you. She's a legend, having racked up more kills than someone of the most seasoned hunters, and all the tender age of 24. How old is everyone else? I spot her disappearing into the heavy crown that's mulling about in the center of the tavern. A crowd that's apparently pretty pissed off about something. I decide to investigate. Might as well get stuck right in. What could possibly go wrong? Everything would proceed to go wrong. I push my way into the crowd, and what I find both baffles and amuses me. A lichen. A hybrid lichen sat smack bang in the middle of the tavern. The lichen- is that- a werewolf? That's what lichen means, right? My first impression is that he seems perfectly harmless, even if his cockiness is almost a palpable aura. As I take it up closer, however, I can see the scars he bears. A seasoned scrapper, then. Not shy in the least and eager to stir up the ire of the authorities and other creatures, apparently. I'm just making up this, like, headcanon about this random person that's just chilling out in the corner of the room. I think his scarlet eyes flashing. Then he's kicking out the chair in front of him, gesturing me to sit down. Either he's bold or he's got something to prove. And I find myself being watched by the eyes of every tavern guy. They're lucky I kept my cool. Wouldn't you say, Hunter? Is everyone so high? You seem harmless. I think I can handle you. Brows draw together and do a deep scowl. But he still looks relatively relaxed. Playful, even. <laughs> you do, do you? Would you care to test that theory? Uh! One of his wolf ears twitches, and I can't help but smile at the loose thread. Maybe another time. How about you tell me your name and why you apparently have a death wish hanging around in a tavern full of humans who quite clearly aren't too fond of non-humans. Wait, he has four sets of ears? Alcar, 
And I don't have a death wish. Not today, anyway. Pretty. <laughs> Okay, I kind of just want to keep on this visual. This is really pretty. Only today. He smiles, pulling his arm back across his chest. You don't need to concern yourself with me, Hunter. I stay far away from your kind. From everyone. Mostly. Oh, he's a loner. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I do enjoy coming here to rile this lot up, though. Unless they come looking for me, of course. The woman was too stunned to speak. He glances over his shoulder, catching Piper's gaze. She flips him off, turns around to face me, his shoulders shaking with his laughter. I'm sure you'll grow to despise me in time, just like every other idiot in this hopeless town. Aye. He stands, and all the patrons stiffen, and so quiet you could hear a pin drop. But Alcar merely rolls his pretty eyes and flushes me a sharp grin. He looms over me, close enough that I can smell the earthly, distinctly pectoral scent of him. If my advice is worth anything to you, then trust me when I say to trust no one. Okay. okay. Goodbye, Hunter. Bye! See you later. Because apparently this is a really small town and everyone knows each other. I glance at the clock. It's only 10.30. I have some time to kill. Yeah, you live like till 2 o'clock. What are you gonna do? Oh, go to the cemetery. Okay, sure. The town is small. Very small. And it takes me less than an hour to walk it from end to end. On my travels, I find myself drawn to the cemetery. And the scent of blood is thick here. Okay. That would be because this is the site of the last murder. I come across a patch of scorched grass. The earth around is trampled by the boots of enforcers and hunters alike. I close my eyes and try to picture it. What happened to them. But it's hard to truly see knowing how stark the darkness is here. It's a blur. A mere memory. But I feel... Terror. They were so scared. Utterly alone in their final moments. Yeah, that usually happens with death. Something sticks out to me all over that fear. I'm sorry. I love you. The words hit me hard. My chest aching as I feel an intense longing. I feel love. What is this feeling? I remember. I'm sorrow by the sudden sound of heavy footprints, my hand hovering over my weapon. I look around frantically, on guard and ready, and then a striking figure appears. Of course. Of course it does. Ah! A devil? Oh. Hi. He's clad with fine jewelry, his long hair tied in a neat ponytail, the crown on his head adorned with delicate jewelry. I should be unsettled. The point of teeth and sharp claws indicated he's definitely not human, but he's smiling? What? People do that? What? Then, the flicker of a spade-tipped tail tells me all I need to know. I'm staring at a glamour demon. No, I'm finding it hard to be alarmed by his presence, which seems to be a theme here in Lunaris. His eyes are a warm chestnut brown. That looks red. I guess it looks brown there, but I see red. I see red! Okay. And they sparkle in the dappled sunlight as he gazes at me in wonder. Hello, Hunter. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Apparently so has everyone else in this town. You have? You've been expecting me? I watch as his cheeks darken, his gaze dropping to the grass. Well, people talk and I listen. And they've done a lot of talking about you. I hope I didn't scare you. No, not at all. Ah! 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 He's got nice titties though. Okay, anyways. <laughs> you didn't. It's okay. You sure? I've gotten used to startling people. Ugh, I'm not like most people though, so... Joke's on you, pal. I promise you that I've seen scarier. <laughs> okay. His, he laughs, his tail flicking. Oh, I'm certain you have. His aura is calm, if not a little skittish. I decide he's probably more scared of me than I am of him. He's still hard to read, and that's frustrating, but not necessarily alarming. What's your name? The demon exhales sharply, apparently relieved that I'm making conversation rather than drumming my weapon. It's Omen. Omen? Are you good? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. What kind of omen? I feel a smile curling the corners of my lips. Are you a good omen or a bad one? <laughs> Shut up! His lashes flicker and I realize he may not be versed in bad jokes. Oh, he's adorable. Uh, don't worry. It's nice to meet you, Omen. I'm- <laughs> So, how has your day in Lunaris been? I huff a quiet laugh. <laughs> Yet again, perplexed by the wonderfully weird inhabitants of this town. He's certainly the most polite demon I've ever met. I guess it's been fine. I'm just a little overwhelmed. It's a strange town, isn't it? <laughs> you can hear it in the Omen laughs. The sound musical and almost infectious, causing my own smile to widen. You're being polite. It's more than strange. It's a mess. A mess I and many others hope you can fix. Okay, damn, what happened? I grimace, my gaze drifting back down to the place where the last murder victim lay. Sigh and muster as much confidence as I possibly can. I can do this. I can solve these murders. So, absolutely no pressure then? Omen shrugs playfully. No pressure at all. Welcome to Lunaris. His voice sounds familiar. I don't know why. Like, I can't put my finger on it. Honey?
You've got a big storm coming. I make it to the enforcement headquarters with time to spare after August's thinly vented threat about tardiness yesterday. There's an argument happening. I have one minute. Okay, why is the audio so loud all of a sudden? Can you chill? I have one minute before I'm sure General Willingham will dodge me for being late. Then run. I take a deep breath and I knock. Voices stop suddenly. I hear a clack of heels and then. Yes. Oh, it's you. You don't have to be unpleasant about it. They quickly glance at the clock. Oh, you're on time, at least. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know it's terribly cozy out there, but please come in. You're blocking the doorway. How am I supposed to get in? Rude! Tip, 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 panor, Chris Patton does a Oh, okay. I've probably heard him in some things then. That's, that name sounds familiar. In that case, I'm experiencing a weird case of deja vu. Do you get deja vu? Hey, it's Piper! What the fuck is going on? This is what the fuck is going on. He's on call with me and stop! No! <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> no! Oh shit! Oh shit! No! You're kidding! You're kidding! You're kidding! You're kidding! <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> I need to pause. Shut up. For those of you playing at home, do not know why I fell to the floor. Because I'm an overdramatic bitch, but mainly because I think we've met all the cast of characters that we can romance. And Omen, I'm like, oh, he's cute. He's so nice. Blah, blah, blah. Come to find out. It's the same English voice actor as Oikawa. Toro Oikawa from Haiku, who, if you don't know, I have beef with him for some forsaken reason. I honestly don't remember why I have beef with him because it's been so long. But that's just our relationship right now. And I, that's like a jump scare. I did not expect that to happen on my Christian Minecraft server. I, <laughs> taught me so, I'm all like, I'm like sweating now. Girl, I was not expecting that. But it took good dirt. Okay, it's not awkward at all. It's a little. <laughs> we have a meeting, general. August sighs, but that's to get Piper almost guiltedly but the sorry expression fades the second he, she meets their gaze. Yes, we do. You're dismissed for today, madam. They stare each other down. I wonder how the hell they ever managed to become one of the most successful illumination teams in all of Escria. All I see is dispirited hunter and impossibly tired enforcer. Yeah, what happened to y'all? Harry is on- Harry? Harry Style? Is on his way. I suggest you depart immediately. Shit. Fades. I'll go and look for your possibly a small chimera, but probably a big fucking cat. <laughs> one funny. day you'll have to stop punishing me, you know. What did she do? See you around, Hunter. Enjoy your important meeting. And remember what I said. Foot. Ass. That was a pleasure, Piper. <laughs> With a wink, she then fully spins to face August, squaring up to them playfully. The enforcer towers above her, still uncaring, still unbothered. Twat. And with that, she turns on her heels and slams the door so hard it shakes with it in its frame. August walks around the back of their desk, practically failing into the well-used leather chair. Ooh, ooh. New visual. Ah, oh, pretty. Very, very pretty. <laughs> I scan the piles upon piles of paperwork that litter the surface, taking in the countless reports and letters, scribbled diagrams, and gruesome drawings. I get the impression August is in over their head. The disorder, all of his information, makes all my fingers twitch. What? They watch me carefully, stifling a yawn with a trembling hand. I know. Trust me, I know. As much as I hate to admit it, we've got nothing. As of right now, I suspect everyone in this town as much as you. August doesn't really strike me as the type to admit defeat so easily, and something more serious than usual stress of the job seems to be lingering under the surface. After what I witnessed back in Ezra's shop, I can't help but wonder what they're like before all this. The way the young witch looked at them was pity. Ezra pitied August. August huffed a quiet laugh and relaxed his back in their chair, and for the first time since we met, they seemed to let their guard down. I don't know why Harry decided you were the right person for this job above all Harry? others, but I trust him implicitly. Well, yeah, it's Harry Stoyles. He has for you, we had better make it work. Okay. They pause, staring me down with those icy blue eyes. How are you ready to begin? I don't understand why some- Ugh. Always general. I feel emboldened by that piercing gaze bores it into me. Something twisting deep in my gut. I lean forward in my chair to make sure they see me. Really see me. <laughs> I can't wait to see where our partnership takes us. General Wilhelm. August presses their finger to their lips, appraising me. Oh, really? I think we can achieve absolutely anything together if we truly want to. Though they're clearly trying to hide it, I see their lips twist into a slight grin. Ow! Oh, there it is! There it is! And you stayed this after knowing me for a mere day and a half. Hmm, how bold. Well, 
You're kind of hot, so why wouldn't I? I know what I'm capable of, and you're quite prolific, you know? Your long, dark lashes kiss the top of their lightly flushed cheeks, a pretty shade of dusky rose painting their pale skin as they lean in. Closer. Closer. I get the feeling sometimes! It's close enough for me to see the flecks of violet that swirl out the outer edge of impossibly blue irises. Ma'am, this is a Wendy's! August is magic overflowing with it. It pours out of them in waves. I can feel it deep in my bones, settling upon my skin. What a gut feeling. A quiet, careful laugh, and suddenly they don't look so tired anymore. I suppose you hunters hold quite the advantage over me with your gut feelings. Don't you? <laughs> August tilts their head, their face doing something strange, an expression too quick to catch appearing before they settle back into the click of and placeable ease they've mastered so wonderfully. Rather, I look forward to testing your fear. I smile, genuine and warm. Me too. And please, call me- Mario. We're going to be partners after all, aren't we? It's very well, but you will still call me General. There's a distant clang of metal, of armor and heavy boots, then the door swings open and an imposing figure enters the room. Ooh, hello? I've heard many tales will Harold Addington III, as he stands before me. Harold? Harry? Harry Styles? I'm Harry Styles. A wide smile breaks across his scarred lips as he pulls August into a tight embrace. Hello? A deep, comforting chuckle rubbling in his desk. Old chest. friend, how the devil are you? It's been Harry! a while. Too long, I said. You look exhausted. Have you not been sleeping? August offers him a wry smile as Harry Styles oh. drops his head. I'm trying to sleep. Does that count? Harry throws him a look, something stern but edged with a certain fondness. When my father- He's a father figure! Harry's a father figure! Oh my gosh! Hunter. It's Hunter. 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 You. Hi. I finally put a face to all those impressive reports I've read. Hello, sir. I am truly at a loss, and I'm finding it hard to remove my emotions from the equation when it's my own people being needlessly slaughtered. By what? Suddenly it hits me. Victims were hunters, were they? <gasps> yes, they were hunters. Just like you. Oh, so I'm in danger. Great. Harry huffs a quiet laugh, clearing his throat. I know we're putting a great deal of responsibility on your shoulders, but I have never-ending faith that you're the one who can help end this madness. Why? Do you have any questions? Yeah, why? I hope you don't think ill of me, but I'd rather not tell you at this point. Well, how am I supposed to do my job if you don't tell me what's going on? Oh my gosh. I suggest just going where your gut tells you. There are plenty of other Lunarians for you to get to know, Lunarians. so just take today to really find your feet. Okay. I must meet with August and some of the other generals now, but please report back to us in the morning. Okay. Unless you find any damning evidence, of course, in which case, report back immediately. Okay. A nod, glancing over at my superior who has taken upon themselves to dive headfirst into yet another pile of paperwork. Trust no one, right? Not a bloody soul. Okay. Suspect everyone. Question everything. Got it. Yep. Say less. I considered heading to the graveyard, something tugging me to tell me that there's more there to me to find, but... <gasps> Wolf Daddy's here! Hey! <laughs> Alcar. Alcar? Alcar? I forgot how to say your name, dude. Sorry. It only appears from between the crooked houses, sending two children that were playing in the streets scattering. What the hell have you been doing in that damned church? My job? <laughs> Are you feeding into their bullshit already? I was literally doing my job. He pauses, huffing a sharp breath through his nose. I thought you'd be different. Just like everyone said he would be. Yeah. How stupid of me to want to believe them. Why is he so aggressive? You just met me! What do you mean you thought I'd be different? I'm literally like everyone else! I You're too hot to be acting like this, sir. Not what you think, Elkar. I was just questioning him. He scoffs, rolling his eyes. His hands are shaking, but he's balled into a fist when he catches me looking. That's so. Why should I believe you? I don't even know you. Then why are you upset? I no, you don't, which is why you shouldn't consider giving me the benefit of the doubt. I'm just trying to do my job. Yeah, literally, dog. You suggest that I just ignore the various obvious cults in the middle of town? I they want to protect you from the likes of me, so why do you despise them so much? Because they couldn't care less about those of us that don't enjoy killing humans mindlessly. Because we're not real creatures if we stay out of trouble and befriend humans or each other. I don't like that they call them creatures like it's kind of weird I, whatever I don't care so if you dare to act even remotely human you're the enemy too he smirks brows raised ah, now, now you're, you're getting it yeah cuz I'm 
clever like that, dog. I think he gets offended if people call him dog. <laughs> Homie, it's just a term of endearment. <laughs> oh, thank you. I have glasses, but I can't see without these ones on. I do this, I just look goofy. Everything's also green. Oh, here we go. I like to get to know you. Can I just try to get to know you a little better? And why would you want to do that? Because you're hot? I offer him a smile and shake my head incredulously that he so oddly suspects the worst from everyone. Oh my gosh, he's emotionally damaged. Am my type? Because I think there's more than you that meets the eye? Am I not allowed to be curious? He narrows those vivid scarlet eyes, meeting my gaze and holding it. I suppose you are. He continues to steer me down, taking a tentative step closer. I get a penis sometimes. So, if I did let you get to know me, what then? I don't know. What do we find out? Well, for starters, I'd buy you some shoes. Is this man walking around barefoot? He's got them grippers out for free? Oh my gosh. How thoughtful of you. But you wouldn't be the first to try. No? He shakes his head, feeling his bare toes against the collar. Oh my gosh. Okay. No. Why do you have your feet out? You were so hot, and then you have to pee. Oh my gosh, he's Taehyung. <laughs> I'm in the graveyard now. Uh, no. The graveyard looks so different at night. Beautiful, even. Fog twists and curls around my ankles as I walk, glimmering specks of vivid blue light sparkling in its haze. Thankfully, the darkness is a little bit more forgiving this evening, and something seems to be guiding me along and leading me right to the place where the murder happened. I'm hoping that I might be able to get a clearer idea of what transpired here that night, and I know who he was, or what he was. As I draw nearer, I recognize him. It's Finn. Finn? And I'm no fool. I know he senses me here, but he doesn't flinch, keeping his gaze fixed on the dark forest that surrounds us. Do I want to tease him? I stand in silence, observe him, noticing the defeated set of his broad shoulders. And she really likes to point out his broad shoulders. <laughs> Like every time she's describing this man, he's like, his broad shoulders. I can't help but notice his broad shoulders. Like me too, girl. <laughs> he takes a deep breath, one I know he doesn't need. And he also didn't know that he was holding in. And he turns slowly. Hunter, what brings you here on this fine evening? I'm investigating murder. Hanging out in graveyards is just part of the job. He rolls his eyes playfully. I relate to the people here a lot more than I do anyone else. Because they're dead? I laugh, and he joins me. <laughs> <laughs> For someone who requires enough sleep, he looks tired. You really spend your free time hanging around graveyards like the vampires and all the storybooks? He gestures at the tombstone, shrugging. Well, yes, of course. How else would I chat with my friends? Oh my god. We stop at the charred patch of grass. Finn pretends to pick up one of the bloodied shards of the scattered gravestone. He brings it to his nose, glancing at me before he gives a tentative sniff. He crinkles his nose, apparently repulsed by whatever scent he's picked up. He hands me the stone, wiping his hands off his trousers. I suggest you keep that. That's not something I've experienced before, and I've eaten, uh, smelled a lot of different things in my time. It seems... off. If it's from a creature, it's certainly not one I've come across in my 600 years. Interesting. I throw him an accusatory glance before I turn my back to what he's handed me. I put it in my pocket for safekeeping, confused on why such a thing is left uncollected. You can't pick up anything familiar at all, which means it isn't the victim's blood. He shakes his head. Definitely not his. Well, here goes nothing. Boop, 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 boop. I do exactly as I did last time and close my eyes, concentrating, pouring all my energy into the seeking out that lingering memory. Just so I remember. Painful, loud, and I almost can't bear it as a deep, scared voice echoes in my mind. Hey, why are you so caught? I feel force pushing at me, but it's weak and nothing I can't handle. <laughs> I'm the freaking main character, you know? So I fight it and hold my ground. It's not hostile, but panicked. It's trying to tell me to go, to get out, to run. That just makes me want to stay all the more. Oh my gosh, she is so corny. Who did this to you? No help, just death. You can't stop them. I tried, I failed. Okay, well, who killed you? The voice quickly disappears and I'm left over with more questions. I open my eyes to find Finn crouched before me, his eyes wide with concern etched on his face. Nadia! What the fuck was that? You didn't hear that? Hear what? I wasn't trying to listen. I didn't risk my abilities interfering with yours. I exhale sharply, shaking my head. It was the hunter. I... That's never happened before. What do you mean? I mean... I feel things. I hear things sometimes too, but I've never directly spoken to a spirit like that before. This is what I think it was. I should go. We both move to stand and my legs feel a little shaky beneath me. Hey, take it easy. Take it easy! Oh then. Are you sure you're good to go alone? Yes. I'll be fine. I just you need- You need to go and seek out Ezra. He can help you. Trust me. He's good with weird shit like this. Melody. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about emotionally unavailability in the anxious attacher. 
hurry to the shop. Still unsteady on my feet, my mind is reeling. What the hell is going on in this town? I round the corner and see that the lanterns on the side are as sharp as dark. I didn't realize how late it had gotten, and I can only hope that he's home. I knock on the door and hear a loud crash, followed by quick footsteps. <laughs> oh! Oh no. Oh god. He's even got bra- <laughs> I can't believe how is this hap how is this happening to me? This is Oika I You know those TikToks where it's like us in every universe? This is not who I expected to meet at the door when I was in I okay, alright. I'm taken aback by the sight of omen. And it starts with an O! <laughs> Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Indel has told us there are at least seven. They're the same picture. Girl, have you ever had that a sicky fate from me in the wrong one? I'm reading you the Oh my gosh. Oh, my wig. Oh, it flew. <laughs> my earpiece has fallen out. My wig is flown. I, <laughs> Honor, I can't do this. Are you supposed to be in there, Omen? He blinks, and a moment later he smiles. Full of sheepish remorse. That answers my question, though it is difficult to even work up an annoyance if he's actually trespassing. Is he influencing with his powers? Or is human face just that cute? Yes, I'm maybe kinda living here right now. How many people live in this dude's floor? Oh, really? He smiles shyly, his ears twitching, and he looks away for a moment. Is Ezra here? He shakes his head, opening the door a little no, more. No, he went out. He said he wouldn't be long, but I don't know when he'll be back. Oh my god, I can hear it. I can hear it. His eyes wide a little more as if he's remembered something. Sorry, would you like to come in? I contemplate rushing off to continue my search for Ezra, but I would be stupid to miss out on a chance to find out a little more about this curious demon. I'd love to, but just for a moment. There is a neat little pile of cushions arranged on the rug in the middle of the shop, and a handful of empty wrappers that can only assume are once filled with treats. Oh, and he has a sweet tooth. Oh my gosh. Omen rushes to pick them up and scrunches them into a ball as if he's trying to get rid of the evidence. His tail sways mindlessly as he sticks them into a small bin hidden behind the counter. He seems oddly at home here, so I assume he's telling the truth about staying here often. <laughs> It's literally Oikawa. <laughs> you look exhausted. Have you been busy today? I laugh quietly, rubbing my temple, my head continuing to thrum. Yes, very busy, yes. He nods. Picking up a lightly glowing blue crystal as it sits on the displays, he fiddles with it nervously. Can I ask you a few questions? I suppose. Yes. I might not be able to answer much, though. Oh, he's so blushy. Why? He grimaces. I try to stay out of things around here. The humans don't like me very much. Why are your titties out? I can't look- <laughs> I'm so distracted! Because you're a demon? His mouth twists into something that looks like it's trying, but very much failing to be a smile. Something like that. I suppose that's fair. It's not every day you see a demon like him walking down the street even these days. He's well glamoured, but he's still obviously inhuman. In a town like this, especially one so small, I imagine he's quite unnerving presence. And that doesn't even take in consideration what the murders and unanswered mysteries might have done to the townsfolk nerves. I don't know much about you. Where are you from? How long have you been here in Lunaris? Lunaris? I don't know. His eyes widen, his pupils dilating, and I see the hint of crimson flicking in his chestnut, flicking in chestnut brown. Ugh! I've been here about two years. Time passes differently here for me, so it's hard to know for sure. You'd have to ask Ezra, he'd know. Would he? I don't miss the way he so tactfully ignored my question about his oranges, but I decide not to press him if he's giving me something. You know much about the recent murders? The woman passively looks out the window, a sad look crossing his face. I know that the humans are upset, and that the ones who were killed were hunters. Ezra is tired all the time, and Finn visits him less. Alcar is... Well, Alcar is distant. You know Alcar? He sighs, a knot forming between his brows. Everything is so different lately. I don't like it. His eyes light up as he turns to look at me. Now you're here. A solution. A fresh start. Why does everyone keep saying that? Like, I get it, I'm the main character, but like... I don't have all the answers! I hope so, Omen but it might take me a little while. Right, yes, I understand that. He fidgets where he stands, his eyes flickering to the curtain that hides Ezra's living area. Can I show you something? Of course you can. One moment. He dashes to the curtain that separates the front of the shop with the back, reappearing within seconds clutching a weathered notebook. Here, I keep notes on things I find interesting. Mostly humans, but also Finn, Alcar, Ezra. He trails off, looking wistful. I thought maybe this could help you? If you need to know stuff about certain people, I might have something here. Aw, he's so thoughtful. I might regret this because I know how y'all like to act. 
but for the sake of the bit <laughs> you said you write things about things you find interesting that's right anything that intrigues me i guess sometimes things i don't understand so i can ask someone later human things mostly I smile, enamored. He's so wonderfully curious. It's a nice break from the doom and gloom that the others I've spoken to have been emanating. Is there anything about me in there? <laughs> Why do I do things? <laughs> he stutters, holding the book a little tighter. Oh, maybe? I raise an eyebrow at him and he shyly drops his gaze. Uh, yes. Yes, there is. What am I doing? My smile grows exponentially, Ugh. And Omen smiles in return. The color in his cheeks is almost matching his shirt. Wait, stop, that's actually really cute. What did you write about me? <laughs> <laughs> his tail sways back and forth enthusiastically, curling around his leg. You're really putting me on the spot, huh? Yeah, as long as it's nice, I don't mind. I offer him a wink. <laughs> oh, it's very nice. Trust me. Ugh. Well, I guess I'll have to trust you if you're not gonna show me. Never say never. I feel a sudden twang of pain in my temple again. The sensation is unpleasant and it burns. Nadia, are you okay? Omen rushes to my side, the notebook forgotten up at the counter. He reaches for me, but he's hesitant, and I can feel an impossible warmth radiating off his palm, but he withdraws his hand before he touches me. I'm fine, I just... I really need to find Ezra. Do you have any idea where he could be? I don't know for sure, but he usually goes to the market or the tavern. Maybe even the catacombs. Catacombs? Y'all got ca Am I in France? No. Catacombs? He nods, leaning closer. Yes, that's where the vampires are. Oh, hence the floorboards. Are you okay? You seem tense. I was actually looking for you. I need to tell you something, but I need you to promise me you won't think I'm crazy. Crazy? Ezra leans in, his eyes wide, and I didn't really get much other than overwhelming sense of loss, which, well, quite normal, considering the circumstances. People tend to feel such emotions when they're dying. But tonight, I went back. Finn was there too, and I felt something... different. Different how, exactly? I heard him, the hunter, the one who died. He spoke to me. I would be such a great actor. <laughs> Ezra's gaze darts around the tavern, and he sits back in his chair, running a hand through his hair. He wipes the look of shock off his face quickly, putting himself to rights. I'm gonna write that down. That's an interesting way to use that sentence. Ezra leans forward again, pushing his wine glass aside, placing his hand upon the table. His fingers are vividly twitching. How close are we? Is he like in my face? Like, are we like this? Is such a thing even possible or am I going mad? I... Oh. Yes. Uh, it, it's possible, but usually only for those with psionic abilities. People have spoken to the dead Feel before. Different. You okay though? Do you feel weird? I touch my fingers to my temple. Very. It's almost as if he's still in there in a way. Am I summoning dead? What is happening? He kind of reminds me. No, I'm not gonna ruin it for everyone. No, maybe I, no. Well. He's listening to Lois Love Child. Anyway, so what now? Ezra fishes around in the pouch that's attached to his belt, retrieving a small vial full of what looks like a strange herb or flower. Here, crush this in some boiling water and it should help with the headache. It's just some fever few and butter burr. Completely natural, I promise. Do you have a pharmacy in there? He laughs softly, shaking his head. <laughs> Silly rabbit, no! Whatever you experience today will still have happened tomorrow. I know what you hunters are like. No matter how scary August is, your report can wait until tomorrow. Period. I promise. I'm drained. I need my bed more than ever right now. Plus, I need to decide how to put this all into words. Be mindful of who you share this information with, okay? There are eyes and ears everywhere. Hear ye, hear ye. Dead people are talking to me. <laughs> my headache has persisted as I lay in bed, but nothing can stop me from falling asleep after the day I've had. I finish the tea I made with the flowers Ezra gave me, hoping it begins to take effect. Close my eyes, but just before I drift off, a distant whisper. My name was James. <laughs> Charles? No. I open my eyes to the incessant sound of fists banging in my door. My head is still pounding, a fuzzy haze. That may or may not be lavender settling over me as I drag myself from the relative comfort of my bed and attempt to ignore the ache that has made itself at home behind my eyeballs. I blink once, twice, and shit, it's dark? Surely I slept for more than a few hours. You better hope you're dead in a bloody ditch somewhere. Hunter, box on some of your dad! I forgot I did that! 
If you don't open this door in the next five seconds, then you'll have to pay for a new one. And Grim is thinking that I might actually prefer that option right now. Should I really sleep for a whole day? Well, at least my death will be the hands of someone other than my ghastly creature, I suppose. Small victories. I look out the window and it's most definitely past sundown. Lunaris is covered in snow, a pristine blanket of perfect white glistening in the moonlight. There are more people in the streets that I've seen the whole time that have been Lunaris, and they're hanging brightly covered bunting from between their crooked little houses. It's Christmas time! I love Christmas! Themed things! I have things to do. Important things. I can hear you in there, you know. Sorry, I'm just really excited about Christmas. I gather my wits and shout as cheerily as I can muster. Be down in five minutes! I hear a series of incoherent mumbles from the other side of the door, followed by a clack of heels as I walk away without much of a fight. I get the feeling that I'm in a lot of trouble. No dip, Sherlock! The wolf is in full brim of red-faced patrons, all wearing far fancier outfits than the usual uninterested garments they tend to sport. I also see August scrolling in the corner, but I almost don't recognize them out of their uniform. They spot me, and I can almost feel my blood freezing as that ice-cold gaze fixes upon me. You thought you were missing. I almost had a search party sent out for you. Oh my god, you care? Wow. That shirt is so ugly on you. Hi, I'm gonna pull a Curtis Connor because I missed a really good joke. Oh my god, that shirt is so ugly on you. You should take it off. <laughs> I'm so sorry that this video is a mess. <laughs> You look good. <laughs> I catch myself staring at August impatiently taps their foot, clearly waiting for an apology. They look different, more relaxed, and far more approachable. It certainly doesn't help my growing infatuation with <laughs> You look different. Amazing, actually. <laughs> their foot stills, a dark brow raising in what I'm hoping is interest. I do. Y'all mm. see that little blush? <laughs> I smile, biting my lip to prevent it from growing as wide as I like it to be. <laughs> Somebody sedate me! Flattery will get you nowhere. And certainly not on a day where you've shown yourself up so horribly. I can't help it that I am sleep deprived. I'm really sorry. I, I didn't do it on purpose. I ha- They raised their hands, silencing me. Rude. I don't want to hear it. If you had attended this morning's meeting, you would know there's quite an important event happening this evening. You don't have much time to talk thanks to your tardiness, so bear with me while I explain. We are in the middle of a crisis, yes, but the Lunar Festival is unavoidable. Harry thinks that if we postpone or cancel it, the town will erupt into chaos. Harry Styles! A festival? While there are horrible murders being committed? Trust me, I know. It's abhorrent, to be quite honest. It's a yearly tradition that's been around for centuries, one that Harry holds dear. He's been distant lately. Watch that Harry's the murderer. But he doesn't know that he's murdering. I don't know. We need our leader back. And if this helps, then I'm willing to play along. And I expect you to do the same. No questions asked, understand? I hardly agree, and I have more than enough in my mind that I need to figure out. But the look August is giving me tells me that I have little no choice. I ponder their question for a little longer than necessary for dramatic effect, feeling them grow impatient. Absolutely, anything you need. They relax at that. Their pretty eyes bright as they stare me down. Ah! Good. And between ah! you and me, I personally think it's a complete and utter waste of time and resources. Especially in the middle of such a crisis. Such a crisis. Okay. So just forget about the horrible murders and my sworn duty to protect and serve the people for a night then. Yes, you've got it. Cool. Bet. And I don't have a choice? Do you have a point taken? A rather loud cheer rings from the doorway and August grimaces running a hand over their face. The festival itself takes place in the market. Please represent us well, Hunter. All eyes will be on you. And this is the perfect opportunity for you to introduce yourself to the town. Ugh, do I have to? Then, they look me up and down, apparently unsatisfied with my presentation. I want to try to do something a little bit more interesting, and I suggest you find someone to escort you. It would a little odd to have you wander around by yourself. We have to show solidarity. Ooh! Ah! Can I not just stay with you? Surely you're the best person to show me around. They sigh heavily, contemplating my suggestion with narrowed eyes. Sounds reasonable, I suppose. What if, it, what if they said now? August retrieves a rather extravagant fur coat from a hook near the doorway and turns on their heels to raise a brow at me. Did you skin a polar bear? What is this? I'm gonna stop by the office for something first. Get changed and wait for me outside. Yes, General. I take a deep breath before heading back to my room to find something to make August May seem interesting. Well, I've changed into something a little less comfortable and a little more slight. I brave the chill and head for the enforcement headquarters. Trot, trot, trot. I stand and wait outside as instructed, but considering August didn't seem to have much time for me to explain my lateness, they're taking their sweet time inside. The cold is biting, the snow falling around me, a light dusting settling in my hair and upon my shoulders. I sigh, teeth chattering as I lean back against the cold, stone cold. 
the cold stone. Oh my gosh. I wait a little more withstanding the cold and boredom as long as I can. August doesn't seem to be appearing anytime soon, so I decide to head inside. Imagine if I get stood up. I better be in a fight or something. <laughs> Hello? The winding corridors are quiet and dark and eerie blue light catches my eyes as I turn the corner to find August's office. There's an unnerving buzz, a low electric hum. A dull glow radiates from the walls that surrounds their door, as if the door itself and there's a formation of strange messy lines vining across the plasterboard and wood. I can hear August moving around inside the office and my momentary panic that they're in trouble subsides. I sense no danger here, just power. Magic. Wait for them outside. Seek them out. What? 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 Something could be going on. I gotta make sure that they're okay. Uh, okay. The walls are glowing brightly, luminous veins of magic pulsing with life, coating every possible surface as August sits at their desk, toying with the ends of their silvering hair. They appear to be lost in quiet thought until the click of the door closes behind me startles them. They stand quickly, a look of both shock and slight embarrassment on their face. What are you doing here? I asked you to wait. And I was worried because you weren't showing up and also it's cold outside? It's like 20 degrees out Fahrenheit. They open their mouth to process further, but they pause and watch me and they take in my surroundings. I've never seen anything like this. What? I walk over to the roaring fireplace where we used to f uh, out to run my fingers over the elegant patterns that surround the mirror that sits pride of place above the fire. I feel a delicate shock sparking through my fingertips as I make contact, but I don't pull away. Instead, I trace the swirls and the curves, closing my eyes and drowning in the feeling that flows through me. I feel alive and possibly connected to something or someone. August draws nearer to me, a bright flush painting their cheeks and the tips of their ears, even sweeping across the top of their chest. Oh! I spend so much time here pouring everything I have into my work. Thanks to that, my magic, it, uh, it's been a little unstable lately. Hmm. I see. They clear their throat, swaying as I remove my hand from the wall. They avert their gaze shyly. Ah! It's not dangerous. I just don't know how to make it stop. Then don't. Girl, shut up! <laughs> they look up at me with wide eyes, a small smile crossing their lips. I find it so shameful that I cannot control it. Oh my god, I love them. I love them so much. There's no shame in being powerful. You should embrace it. It's just another part of who you are. Part of who I am. Huh. No one has said that to me in a very long time. Oh my god, they're in love with me! Ah. Your magic is beautiful and unique. Just like you. <laughs> Market looks incredible! It's alive with color and full of smiling faces and laughter. And it's warm despite the bitter cold. I feel my worries and apprehension washing away, even if for a moment. If I'm going to be forced to do this, I might as well enjoy it. August stays close to me, though apparently they're quite unsatisfied that they have to be. Ugh. Isn't this awful? Everyone is so happy going about their evening as if our people aren't being slaughtered. Okay, valid. I'm not even gonna dispute that because that's a va that's valid. <laughs> I quirk my brow at them, stifling a smile. So, General, what would you be doing right now if there was no investigation, no festival? What does a night off look like for Enforcer Willenheim? They don't hesitate to respond, staring dreamily into the distance. I'd be curled up at home in front of my fire. Reading a good book and nursing a glass of the finest wine. Mm, the perfect evening. Oh I want them so bad. It's uh <laughs> They stare at me with narrowed eyes, suddenly suspicious. Why? I'm not out to get you, dog. What? I thought I had trust issues. Oh my goodness. I want to know what you like. Why is the music so loud? I'm just interested to know what vices you have, if any. Vices? <laughs> yeah, I could be one if you like. <laughs> I have plenty of those, most of which would be none of your business. But what if we made it my business? <laughs> I laugh at the almost sultry tone of their voice, desperately wanting to press them further. Come on, General, indulge me. Tell me just one. August bites their bottom lip, their eyes darting around, checking who surrounds us before they step closer. Oh! The sweet scent of lavender fills my nostrils as I lean close. Their long lashes dipped and their lips parted. My breath catches in my throat. Not in a million years, Hunter. That is so hot. Oh my god. <laughs> they pull away, entirely too pleased in themselves as they turn on their heels and stride deeper into the market. They pause, though, and they throw me a look over their shoulder. It's something mischievous that leaves me feeling that I might not be able to move. What are you waiting for? Come on, let's find us a drink. Heaven knows I need one. I follow them dutifully. Dut- dutif- <laughs> Moving on. Taking in the sights and sounds, the rich smells. There are stands selling decanton uh, pastries and chocolates and others selling potions and trinkets. I see a few familiar faces, but one stands out above all the rest. Ah, 
Hey! Oh, wonderful to see you guys enjoying the festival. I see August tense. Their shoulders tighten as they stop dead in their tracks to the sound of his musical voice. Ezra, how are you? Why is this so loud? Is it just me? Ezra offers me a sorry look and holds the goods he has cradled in his arms a little tighter. He looks at August with such unashamed fondness that it almost hurts. It looks like he's almost longing for approval or something. I decide to take an attempt to sweeten the sour mood. Did you buy anything interesting, Ezra? Oh, nothing too exciting. They reduced the cost of goods during the festival, so I'm just stocking up some things that I'm short. August is clearly not interested in attempting to initiate any further conversation, and the silence that hangs above us is uncomfortable. Well, I better get going and find Finnegan and the others. He's showing Omen and Alcar around, and that particular combination tends to be dangerous. Wish me luck. I'll see you around. I want to hang out with the gang. Wait, maybe I made the wrong choice. No, I made the right choice. Bye, Ezra. Good luck. August takes a deep breath, watching the witch disappear in the crowds. They visibly relax once he's out of sight. Homie, what is the problem? This guy just cares about you. What is your issue? I need to know. Tension between them baffles me, and I'm a little bit more curious to find out what caused it. I can't possibly fathom Ezra doing something to warrant August's obvious anger. I've all seen him so far and that he's impossibly kind. I don't mean to pry, but what happened between you and Ezra? August purses their lips and narrows their eyes. What happened between Ezra and I is in the past, but guilt still lingers on my part anyway. <gasps> Oh. He seems to care for you a great deal. August looks off in the distance, filling with the sleeve of their coat. He's always been a foolish boy, but caring for me after the way I treated him is by far his most idiotic choice. We've known each other for a long time, and I have my regrets. Oh my gosh. I not- Why do I always go over for the emotionally damaged ones? Ah! Because they're always hot? Who am I kidding? <laughs> If I wanted to press it further, August turns and continues in their search for a drink stall, giving me little choice but to follow. I just need us to get tipsy so we can make out. That's my goal for the end of this street. Their expression brightens exponentially when they spot a little wooden stall at the very edge of the market. The rich scent of cinnamon and cloves lingers in the air. The merchant smiles, eagerly waving us over. General Willem, a pleasure as always! Who's your friend? This is Hunter Bangtan Soyanda, who hasn't had a chance to enjoy your wonderful wine. They turn to me, their eyes bright. Clearly wine is the way to their heart. Would you like some? Yes, please! I'd love to! August smiles wide and they turn their offer to the bald man and their coin. Enjoy the fireworks! We bid him farewell and August eagerly hands me the steaming cup, a slice of orange, and a stick of cinnamon decorating the rim. Now we can finally enjoy this wretched festival. I bring the cup to my lips and take a sip. The liquid instantly warms my insides. The rich taste of it lingering upon my tongue. It's delicious. Thank you, August. Oh, and they bought it for me? Oh my, it's, this is literally a date. We're on a date right now. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, we're working together, but we're literally, it's a date. It's a date, ah! The festival is full swing by now. A band plays near the docks, people dancing and singing, and a rather loud crowd begins to gather near where I assume the firework display will take place. Sounds fun. I spot Ezra trying and apparently failing to teach Finn the simplest of dance steps. He seems to be gaining some sore toes in the process. I've never seen a vampire so inelegant. Omen and Alcar sit at a bench at the edge of the beach sharing a bag of what looks like chocolate. I smile, find myself warming at this strange little town and its odd inhabitants more and more by the day. You've been here for three days, homie. Piper here? I told her she had to be, so I would hope so. No night off for her then. Piper doesn't do nights off or days off for that matter. She has her flaws, but her worth ethic, ethic is admirable. As some weird coincidence, I see her heading toward, right towards us. Oh, hey, there she is! She waves at me with a smile, but it fades when she sees who I'm with. Oi, oi. What do we have here, hmm? Hey girl, what's up? Uh. August sighs, their eyes practically rolling out of their skull. Could you be nice for a minute? Aren't you supposed to be working, Piper? Not disturbing us. Oh my god. We're us now? Ah! Okay. Oh, us now, is it? Are we not a team, August? August <laughs> Just mutter something under their breath that sounds a lot like a curse. Busy night? Any trouble? Managed to tear her death glare from August reluctantly. It's boring is what it is. You couldn't have allocated one of your juniors to man the festival, general. And why would I do that when I know it annoys you so much? Now it's Piper rolling her eyes, a condescending smile crossing her lips. To add insult to injury, she places her clenched fist to her chest to a salute I haven't seen since training school. Oh, thank you, Major General. I couldn't be more honored. The girls are fighting! Glad to have a night to feel normal again, however fleeting that might be. I trust you're having a good evening together. The best! Ah. Ooh. It's not hard with August. My gaze darts to August, a warmth blooming my chest as they smile at me. I have the best company, so it's hard not to enjoy myself. Ah. 
Harry notices our exchange glances and I see his smile widen exponentially. Why is everything widening exponentially with you people? I couldn't agree more. Augustus is quite special. Yes, they are! <laughs> August rolls their eyes, but their cheeks turn bright red. Oh my god, they're so shy and so cute. Ah! Stop teasing me. Oh, never. It's so much fun. What do you mean? I can assure you, I'm not teasing. I mean it wholeheartedly. Stop being so stubborn and accept some praise for once. Love yourself, homie. August stares at me and it almost feels like Harry isn't here. Like it's just the two of us. <laughs> anyway, sorry for the flying visit, but I'd better get going. I have a okay. speech to give. You two take care now, okay? I'll see you in the morning. Okay, okay. So, uh, these fireworks are apparently quite prolific. August's face twists in an unamusing expression. I imagine you'll be thoroughly disappointed. Unless he's wrangled some witches to hands the show, that is. Actually, we better go and find a spot. They're actually really excited, but they just don't want people to know. We find a seat near the edge of the crowded beach. Oh my gosh, this is so... Area falls deathly silent as Harry makes his speech. He talks of perseverance, of community, and without directly mentioning the horrible things this town is in endure, he inspires hope. I look at August, but their expression is unreadable as they stare out to the blackened ocean. I can't help but wonder what they're thinking. Watch the fireworks watch August. Obviously, what do you mean? Oh, <laughs> the fireworks begin, an incredible display of vibrant colors lighting up the sprawling canvas of shimmering stars. I smile as I hear the excited giggling of children and adults alike, but while those around us might get distracted by the vivid sparks. I find myself watching something else, something far more beautiful. Oh my god. I turn to look at August, watching colors flash across their angular face, lighting them up in the most perfect way. Show us, show us, show us! I smile brightly as they turn me my gaze, and I feel a pull. Strange energy seems to thrum between us. They smile at me in return, and everything else fades away. No firework could ever be as quite as breathtaking as August. Not even close. Why would you not show us? I find myself unconsciously shifting closer to August. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Are you? Are you girly? Oh, yeah, okay. I see their fingers twitching where they rest between us. Our gazes are still locked as I move my own finger closer to reach out. Then, somewhere in the distance. No! Oh, God! God! Literally, I was just thinking, what in the game drama? Why would you? Mm. Who died? Who? Yeah, you're here. Yeah, who died? It looks strange relieved to see me. Wait. Wait, the way the, the way we had to part on the beach was less than satisfactory. I'm so sad, especially after whatever that was that transpired between us. I'm trying to think about it. It's not the place or time, but the fond way that they gaze at me tells me they long to reach out and touch me. Oh, it was, I guess someone died. So that's what's stopping you. Okay, fair enough. We ran into some trouble on the way, but we took care of it. I gather that's why you were so late. It's fine. Obviously, such things cannot be prevented. It's not good news. As I'm sure you can tell. Do we have an identity? They shake their head, brushing the front of their fur coat. I'm sure they're less than happy about wearing in such a situation. We cannot identify them. Their voice catches. There is no body. Again. Nothing but... Uh, well, I don't need to repeat such monstrous details. You've read the reports from the previous murders. Much of the same ghastliness. Piper scoffs, her shoulders tensing, and I swear I can see tears in her eyes. She's hurting and angry, so angry that I can feel it. Goose flesh prickling across my skin thanks to our close proximity, and my own emotions waver with the sheer force of it. This is fucking ridiculous. This cannot keep happening, August. Period. I flinch, feeling the surge of energy. August reacts. The smell of ozone is suddenly thick in the air. There's a flash in the darkness, and violet sparkles crackle around their clenched fists, their light eyes alight. Thank you, Piper, for your input. I didn't know this was upsetting. I assumed everyone was enjoying this. Dozen eyes turn to look at them, and they quickly calm themselves. August looks beyond exhausted. The skin beneath their eyes is purple, their cheeks drawn. Piper opens her mouth to retaliate, but wisely decides against it. This actually might be the first time I've seen her look guilty. August averts their gaze as if they can't bear to look at her. They're upset too. I suggest you keep your thoughts to yourself in such a situation. Unless you have any useful insight. I do. I can talk to the dead. I drag myself to my feet, and now I only have one thing on my mind. One thing that I must do. Visit the Lieutenant General and find out what the hell is happening to me. No, don't talk to Harry. Oh. Okay, never mind. I thought she was gonna go talk to Harry. You the door to August's office is thankfully ajar, so peeking around the frame, finding- No! Don't talk to Harry! Harry, stop! I can't tell you how relieved I am to see you safe. Uh, yeah, okay. A likely story. 
married? I need you to tell me something, but I need you to promise that you won't think I've lost my mind. Bring Neros's gaze, nodding once. Go on. I visited the grave a few days ago while I was getting my bearings. He stays silent, but I can't help but notice the way his knuckles bleed white as he tightens his fist. I felt an overwhelming sense of grief there. Pain, a yearning for lost love, a sense of failure and crippling sorrow. Is James your husband? Did you murder your husband? I need to stop thinking and just read. The other night I visited again. It was almost like something was pulling me there. I heard more, not just a memory this time. He spoke to me. He looks like he'd seen a ghost. He stares at me wide-eyed, quickly swiping at his cheeks. Oh, James. Was that your husband? Wait, did you and your husband fight and then he died and then he wanted to apologize, but it was too late because he died? Or did you kill your husband because you're secretly the bad guy? One of the two. James was assigned as my very first hunter the moment we both graduated at 18. Wait. He'd shown remarkable promise in school. Never Basically, mind. Wait. I, too, had impressed, so we were placed together in the hopes that we'd become unstoppable. We were inseparable in the field together for decades, Wait. until I took this post as Lieutenant General. Are you married or not? But, as well as being my subordinate, he was also my partner. I was right! Oh my god, I'm so freaking good, so freaking good! My husband. Hey, somebody run me my money! My heart sinks, bile rising in my throat. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Oof. <laughs> I failed the hunter initiation quite dramatically, and he was taken away to his father's home country to train to become what I'd always dreamed of becoming. Life had other plans for me, but we still found each other in the end. Oh my god, that's so romantic. Wait. He used to joke that we were destined. The romantic fool. I really don't think it sunk in that he's gone just yet. He said he was sorry. What were you guys fighting about? Because this is so sad. I keep thinking he's going to walk through my door, covered head to toe in blood and grime, with a stupid, wonderful grin on his face. Oh my god. I notice how his eyes light up when we talks about him. They say that people deal with grief differently. But I haven't quite figured mine out just yet. You'll get there. I apologize for not telling you, but it was important to me that I could trust you first. Huh? My judgment has been impaired, I'll admit it. Though this turn of events isn't exactly what I expected. What did he tell you when he spoke to you? His words waver, and he mindlessly fiddles with his wedding band, eagerly awaiting my response. I think about what Ezra said, about being careful who I share this with. Did that apply to the Lieutenant General of all of Eskria? <laughs> I'm not in the business of lying. I don't think it gets you anywhere. I am a truther all the way. Got the impression he wanted to say more, but I don't know how he managed to communicate with me in the first place. I think he can only say so much before he fades away. It feels like a great struggle for him to reach out. Cannot explain it. He was saying, I'm sorry. This is not what I wanted. He closes his eyes tight, shaking his head as if he can't bear to hear more. I will need you to speak to Augustus about this. They know more about psionic magic than anyone here. I'm sure they'll be able to help you figure this out. I do not trust anyone else. That's fair. Did... Did he truly not say anything else? He said, I'm sorry. He didn't. You're just lying? You're just lying? He didn't. But the first time that I felt him, I could tell how much he loved you, Harry. You were all he could think about in his final moments. He laughs quietly. <laughs> yes. Well, he's all I can think about, too. A curse now, I suppose. There's a lot of hunters out there that can only aspire to be half as brilliant as Hunter Lane. I would love to hear what he was like, if you don't mind. Somber expression disappears, he seems to brighten up a little. He was a cocky son of a bitch, but it worked well for him in the field. He was never careless, though. Oh my god. I often found myself watching him instead of paying attention to whatever was attacking us. Luckily, he could fight well enough to protect us both, or I'm sure we'd have been in trouble. A lot of enforcers choose to stay cooped up in a stuffy office, away from all that danger. Working with James made me not want to miss a thing. He digs into his coat pocket, retrieving his wallet and pulling out a small weathered photo. He pauses, staring me down as if he has reservations, but then he hands it over. He was black! I was thinking of my <laughs> Oh, I wish I said it out loud, because then you would believe me. I was like, I swear. This is a black man. He is married to a black man, and I was right! <laughs> He's hot, too. They're both hot. Oh my gosh. The streets outside of the headquarters are bustling with hunters and forcers and everything in between. I snap back to reality when I bump into something cold and hard, finding a part. What? <laughs> Anyways, finding a pair of familiar golden eyes staring back at me when I look up. Distracted, are we? 
Yeah, why are your titties out? Hey! I step back, brushing down the front of my coat, and I see his lips are on the cusp of curling on the side of a vaguely amused smirk. You could say that. It's been a long night, dude. He offers me a sympathetic look, shoving his hands firmly in his coat pocket as a duo of enforcers pass by. They make a point to glare at him and by proxy at me for being near him. Finn dutifully avoids their gazes, like a man who had centuries of perfect feigning indifference the way people like me treat him and his kind. I'm glad you're safe, Nardian. I'll we'll worry for you when we have. Thank you, Finn. He turns to check that the street is clear, turning back to me with a serious look. I have my client patrol in the woods. I'll ensure that they're out till dawn, searching if necessary. Anything we can do to help find whatever or whoever is doing this. I'm grateful for the assistance, and I certainly can't say that I've ever had an entire client of vampires as allies before. I'm optimistic that their help will be a great value to me. That's very kind. That's very kind. I watch him go before I close the door. Only the light of the moon guiding his way as he disappears into the darkness. Well, that's nice that he walked me home. What a gentleman! Overwhelmed by today's events, I find myself falling into a swift tailor and dreamless sleep. Reality settles over me when I wake. A thick smog that almost suffocates as I reluctantly drag myself in the almost comfort of my bed. I haven't had anywhere near enough rest, but I must relent. To gather the energy to dress and head downstairs to face whatever obstacles are hastily and utterly shoved in my way. Hunter. I need to speak with you. Can you back away from the mic, bro? <laughs> What's wrong? Wait, I've seen that pattern. Right? A hunter's sash. Alcar is holding a hunter's sash in his hand. It doesn't belong to the hunter that was killed last night. It it's doesn't not? belong to any of them. It's not right. The smell. Interesting. He looks over his shoulder, checking to ensure that we don't have company. I have to be careful. I can't be seen with such things. Don't. They'll make me pay for my generosity with my own blood. Again. Again? What happened the first time? August is taking their sweet time. I want to get smooched. Don't worry, Alcar. I won't mention you. Even if they do try to give you cover for it, they'll have to get through me first. Alcar's jaw drops. He stares at me like I've just said something outlandish before the moment passes and he takes a step back. A bark of laugh bubbling out of him. <laughs> oh, that's rich. What? I'm just saying. I glare at him and he grins right back with not an ounce of humility. Richer than you, that's for sure. Oh, what are you, 12? Right on your level then, right? <laughs> What's happening here? Are we gonna kiss right now? <laughs> daddy, daddy, da. I'm in the witchy shop now. Ah. The shop is empty when I arrive. The comforting tinkle of the bell that sits above the door welcoming me. Ezra is nowhere to be seen. Oh, of course he isn't. But I do spot a small white cat curled at the foot of the shop counter. Ooh, kitty. Ezra emerges clutching a cup of steaming tea. <sighs> hey. I'm so relieved to see that you're okay. And now politely offering him a clipped smile. Hope you've had enough rest. You look exhausted. Not that I'm surprised after what I assume was an incredibly late evening. Would you like some tea? I actually need your help with something quite urgent. You do? What is it? Both the cat and Ezra watch me intently as I retrieve the sash, the violet bloodied fabric unfurling as I hold it up. Though we're quite clearly alone, his voice is tactfully quiet. Where exactly did you get that? Um... I don't think you understand. This puts us all in danger. Okay, well, do you want to explain to the rest of the class why that is? Because I don't know. Danger? By BTS? You're aware of who its owner is, I presume, based on your reaction? I play dumb, disguising my interest in the fact that I know it's not the new victims. If he's hiding something, I'll find out. Sharp inhale, and Ezra closes his eyes tight, the magic dissipating, and the sash falls and settles upon the wood. He drops his head, his knuckles tight as he grips the edge of the counter. I had a feeling. Ezra, work with me here. I need you to be honest. He looks scared, maybe I'm a little upset. This is way bigger than me, but I can't in good conscience keep this from you. Thank you. Tell me what's happening. This sash belongs to a girl named Aya Walker. He pushes away from the counter, putting distance between himself and the sash, eyeing it warily. And who exactly is Aya Walker? I really shouldn't say anymore. I would hate for any harm to come to you because of me. How am I supposed to figure out who's murdering people if you don't give me the facts? A young general being thrown into the dungeons is alarming, especially when there's no apparent reason. Treason, murder, unlawful torture, these are all things I know hunters have been in prison for, but never without the public having full knowledge. We have families and friends. We save lives. There must be something somewhere that tells me she was stripped of her title and thrown in a cell. To the archives! I take the sash from the counter and tuck it inside my coat. Ezra keeps a close eye on the movement as it may jump out and bite him. Who was her enforcer? Was it August? Ezra throws me the look again, the while he looks sad and reluctant. <laughs> of course, because I don't have enough on my plate already. People are dying and are being thrown in dungeons. Got your back, Ezra, just as long as you have mine. Thank you. Just stay safe. He needs you. 
Okay, cool. Bye. Still air hits me as soon as I open the door of Ezra's shop and step outside. It hisses in my ears, piercing through my layers like it wants to chase me back indoors. I can think of no alternative more exciting, but my work is done here and I need to move on. Not a moment less well timed, it seems, as I close the door, immediately notice a familiar face skulking about just out of my vision until now. I was wondering when he was gonna show up. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> startles when he realizes I've spotted him. He takes a full step away from me, one hand half raised, his tail lashing like a snake. For reasons I can't even begin or fathom, there's genuine fear on his face. Woman? I'm gonna flirt with uh, the devil. The first thought crossed in my mind that he's suspiciously distraught. The second is that it pains me to see him that way. Maybe a distraction is in order. I try to catch Omen's eye and wink at him. Speak of the devil. I was wondering where you were. I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> it's too real. <laughs> Am I imagining that he's stiffening at the words? It's hard to tell with how stiff he already is. It only lasts for a second before his face turns red. Maybe redder than just a blush. Something flickers in Omen's eyes, like Ember is about to burst to life. But he looks sideways, too quickly for me to make sure. His aura churns, shifts, but doesn't change. Omen twists a strand of hair with one finger and tugs at it, tails twitching most anxiously. Adorably. Girl, shut up! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. I wasn't upset, just surprised is all. He glances at me again. Very briefly, his brown eyes half hidden beneath the long lashes. Omen swallows and then blush intensifies. But he is smiling, much to my delight. Tremendously, uncertainly, but he's smiling. After a moment, he even deigns to meet my eyes. I like that word. Hold on. Deigns? Clearing his throat, Omen folds his arms together and seems to make a conscious effort to relax. Thank you for worrying about me. I promise I stayed out of trouble. Did you? Did you now? Okay, cool. But I believe you. Omen blinks, then smiles wider, his shoulders sinking in palpable relief. Okay. That's good enough. He looks at me intently, head tilted to one side. What about you? I heard there was some kind of trouble. I'm unhurt. Omen's eyes flicker at Ezra's door, expression dubious. I wasn't seeing him because I was hurt. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Moment of silently awkward silence. Wait, no. <laughs> Ah! A moment of silently awkward silence. A slightly. Why am I saying silently? I I'm looking for someone. Oh, are you? Cool. Omen says this very quietly, like he's confessing a secret. He scans my face with eyes flickering red rather than the usual warm brown. I wait since there's little else I can say. Then something seems to resolve. Omen looks at me to Ezra's doors and takes a step back, his mouth tight. She's probably not in there. I should get going. It's nice seeing you again. She? She? You're seeing other women? She? <laughs> he makes to turn away and I don't know what moves me to act. Perhaps it's his aura. The way I suddenly sense it swell under his glamour and spot the wisp of flame trailing his hair and the tips of his ears. Perhaps he's walking away. I simply can't let him go right now. Perhaps I'm tired of one more fucking mystery in this town. Either way, I reach out and grab his wrist. Wait! Not the freaking- Wait up! Why am I holding hands with Aikawa? And instantly regret it. Drama. Heat scorches my hand, forcing me to withdraw with a small cry. Omen looks over his shoulder with me with glowing amber eyes, his lips drawn back at a half smile. His still eagerly human face is framed by a wreath of fire. My guts clench, twists drop under a small glimpse of the immense blistering presence that sprung out of nowhere. My instincts scream at me in warning. Demon. Then Omen jerks back as though out of a trance, and everything extinguishes. I don't know how long we stand outside Ezra's shop with the space of the sword swinging between us. Omen's arms are limp by his sides, making no move to defend himself. All he does is stare at me. Stare at me with huge eyes and palpable horror. I'm sorry. It's okay, like oh it's fine. I force my mouth open to tell him it's alright. I've had worse, really, but I can only pry my jaw apart. The words, I can't force them. He's not waiting to hear them. He's stepping away. One, then two, then three, then he turns around and flees. Bars. I can't move my legs to follow. By the time I get enough control of myself back, Omen's already long gone. What just happened? What just happened? I meant it when I said I'm tired of being pushed from pillar to post, kept in the dark. Enough is enough. This town wants saving, then I'll do it on my own terms. Perry and Queen, you tell her. The door to August's office is thankfully unlocked, and I'm pleased to discover that it's empty. I take a deep breath and head straight for the filing cabinet I've seen August rummaging in through so often, and I carefully open the drawers. After much rummaging, I eventually find Aya's papers stuck at the very back of the bottom drawer. If I didn't know what I was looking for, they'd have easily gone unnoticed. I certainly looks like August had tried to hide them, which only increases my suspicion. Find her transfer papers, a glowing letter of recommendation from her previous enforcer. Her records are clean with no discrepancies, nothing but praise. I see the words kind and thoughtful repeated multiple times. The only complaint, if you can call it that, is that her enforcer had is she was overly cautious. Then I find it. Her discharge papers. An obnoxious red treason stamped 
across the front page. Damn. Oh no! Hold on. <laughs> In the blink of an eye, the whole light office lights up and the door loudly slams against the wall. What are you doing? Nothing. I watch magic coat every surface flowing and curling over the walls, furniture. Floors, walls, floors, furniture. It even creeps over their clothing, their skin too. They stare at me wide-eyed, vivid violets swallowing the once ice blue of their irises. And though I should be concerned I've been caught, I'm distracted. The magic that glimmers upon their clothing disappears, and their eyes lose the otherworldly glow, but the room remains alight. They look at the bundles of paper that I hold tightly in my hand, a frown furrowing their brow. I would ask that you put those back, Hunter. Their words are eerily calm, and they seem more concerned than annoyed. What happened to her? They close the door, clicking the lock, and checking the handle before they walk towards me. Oh! As poised and perfect as ever, they stare me down. You no, know, not even Piper found those. I hate to admit that I'm impressed. <laughs> now they're impressed with me, oh my god. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? August. They unfurl their fingers in a silencing gesture and I pause. August is still my superior officer. I am nothing if not respectful. I do not wish for Piper to be demoted, nor do I wish for you to meet the same fate, but I appear to be having a case of deja vu. But, you know, sometimes the hand that feeds is a forceful one. I'm perplexed. I, literally. I expected a much harsher conversation. August isn't exactly known for their calm temperament, and this is startling out of character. Aren't you going to adonish me? Sly smile, they shake their head. I believe in you, strangely. I believe that you're a bright light at the end of a very, very dark tunnel for this town. Well, am I? Really? Say and more. Uh, I have been questioning things lately. Really? Do you go on? Do I believe that I'm here for you. <laughs> The look that crosses their face breaks my heart. It's one of shame. I long to comfort them, but these papers weigh heavy in my hands. Let's just clear this desk and just take it. August, please, I can't take any more dishonesty. I'm here to help. I want nothing more for all this pain to stop. They drop their gaze, apparently unable to look at me. I'm here for you. I just like cup their face. I'm here for you, my love. Ah! Their cheeks flush pink, mouth set in a thin, nervous line. I do not deserve it. I've got myself in this mess, but they catch themselves. I do not deserve it. Oh, you do! Oh my God! Go to therapy! And then marry me! I cross the room, the papers discarded, and I stand face to face with them. Help me, August. Tentatively reach for their head and tail it out! The markings of brain thrumming in time in what I assume is August hammering calls. Oh my god, this is so yes. People are terrified, and I think you are too. What did this girl do to be deserved to be forgotten? If I told you that I do not know, would you believe me? I run my thumb across the back of their hand. I look deep in those eyes, eyes that seem to hold the universe. I would. Then you must be a fool. A fool in love. Ah! I laugh quietly, reaching up to tie, reaching up to tie, <laughs> reaching up to cup the curve in their jaw with my free hand. They lean into my touch as if they created for an eternity. <laughs> then a fool I'll be. Ah! The time spent with them at the festival granted me access to a very different August, one that I found myself becoming quite fond of. I relish in the warmth of their flesh skin against my own, reveling in how beautiful they are. I'll always protect you, August. We can help each other here. The very insinuation that I work for, that I dedicated my life to. I move to pull the sash out of and unfurl, holding it before them. August's eyes grow wide. Who does this belong to? Aya Walker. Their expression is unchanging. I see. It's bloodied. I nod, handing it to them. They carefully lay across their palms, stunning it intently. Heavily and torn to shreds. Whatever happened, she put up a fight. They frown, their lips pursed. Something is clearly perplexing them. She was not reported to be injured upon her arrest. That much I do know. Something like that wouldn't be omitted. I throw them a sorry stare, wondering how they could be so sure of such things. It's positive the blood is hers. I want to tell them how I know, but I can't implicate Ezra or Alcar. Not after they were so both clearly terrified. I'm sure. And I'm going to need you to trust me on that. <sighs> Strangely, they don't question it. Instead, they sigh, placing the sash present at their desk. She was yours, August. Don't you want to know what happened to her? I want to see her, to visit the dungeon. They glance out the window, another heavy snowfall coats the icy street outside. I think you need to take a seat. 
I have a few confessions. I can hear the rush of my blood pounding in my skulls as I take a seat, my heart trying to escape the restiffed cage of my ribs as I stare my enforcer down. August's fingers are visibly trembling. All color has drained from their skin and I'm fearful that they might faint. They draw in a shuddering breath and reach one of their drawers on their desk, pulling out a vial that glows a vivid lavender. I recognized it from the very first time I met them back in Ezra's shop, which strangely feels like forever. The way they demanded it from him was with a desperation that I haven't seen in them since... But it struck me nonetheless. I can't read! What is this? They clear their throat, unable to meet my concerned gaze. This is what I've been reduced to. Ezra gave this to you? They nod, and I reach for the vial. They watch intently, their throat bobbing as they swallow thickly. What the... Whoa, okay. The room flares to life as I pop the cork. August shifts in their seat. It smells fragrant, almost citrusy. Is it a rusty? <laughs> it is not harmful if used as intended. Ezra would never... He could never create such things. He is not interested in enabling me, but I may have pressured him. Does it give you your magic? I'm confused. I may have taken advantage of it, hence the nature in which my magic has been manifesting lately. Just another thing to add to the long list of regrets I seem to have accrued lately. What does it do exactly? I can feel a crackle in the air, an obvious shift in tension. My magic draws from the mind. And when using it often, I tend to grow weary faster than most. It's a weakness I'm not proud of. And I cannot be viewed to be weak when in such a position in this agency. All right. I gesture towards the vial and I lay it back upon the desk. Before, this affords me the ability to replenish my mana, to put myself to use whenever required. Okay, there are obviously side effects though. Your health is more important than your notoriety, August. They seem taken aback by that statement, maybe even a little embarrassed. Yes, no, I see that now. I've been a little blinded by the desire to impress. The harder I look, the more I realize that I might be pushing myself to the limit for a broken cause. Oh? It's a casually honest statement, painfully honest, and certainly not something I could imagine Ian Foster I met just a week ago daring to utter. It's only been a week? Girl. You mentioned that you didn't want Piper to be demoted, so what happened? Their gaze flickers to the side, staring out the window in the snowy street. After Aya's arrest, Piper became unsettled. Rightfully so. Now they look back. She wouldn't stop rambling about a theory she had about the agency. Corruption, slander, all nonsense to me at the time. She was caught trying to break into the dungeons and rifling through my files. Just like you were this evening. Their gaze beats mine and they somehow seem more concerned for me than they are for themselves. You and Piper, you were friends? Possibly now, I know. But yes, we were. Close enough for her to convince me to arm wrestle her. They absolutely run their elbows if they're nursing an old injury. Ah, oh, wait, that's so cute. Don't do that, ever. <laughs> the way they light up when they talk about such memories doesn't go unnoticed, and I feel a pang of sorrow for their lost friendship. Why don't y'all just talk it out? Have y'all ever considered that? I want to go into the dungeons. I want to see her. Give her their gaze, cheeks rosy, their frustration evident. I cannot authorize that. Not when I know it would put your position in jeopardy. Then come with me. We can go for a second date. Ah! <laughs> Nothing will happen to me. The concern is etched all over their face and it makes my heart hurt. I realize that they truly do care for me. The guilt for what happened with Piper obviously eats at them. And maybe our added closeness makes it a little bit more personal to them. Maybe. August, I swear to you that nothing will happen to me. I know what I'm doing. You seem very sure of that. I feel so. I can't lose you too. It's different than it was with Piper. I they avert their gaze, where their bottom between their teeth. When they look back at me, they take a step forward, reaching for my hand. I care for you. And that may sound idiotic. I know we've only been acquainted for a mere week, but. No! I squeeze their fingers as they lazily twine with my own, almost as if August is unsure if their affection will be returned. I feel it too. Oh, I see. Well then, I'm sure you can understand my predicament here. I nod. Because I do understand. I would hate to see August punished for any of my actions. I do. But I need you to just trust me on this one. I won't do anything to get either of us in trouble. Their hand falls limply from my own. Ow! Their gaze nervously flicking towards the very locked door. I do trust you. I just don't trust anyone else. Whatever you have in mind, be careful. They watch me intently, lips quirking in a small smile as they watch my face light up. You have a plan, don't you? I do. But I'm not sure you're gonna like it. You may not approve, but we have a few allies that probably know the dungeons better than any hunter or enforcer ever could. The dramatic sudden roll of their eyes tells me they know exactly what I'm talking about. You want to enlist a bunch of vampires to help us break into the enforcement dungeons. Not a bunch, just the one. Finn has lived in this town longer than literally anyone. <sighs> August scoffs loudly. Lived 
He's as dead as a doornail. So we're just gonna walk in the dungeons, Casimir in tow, and hope not to get caught. I smile at their obvious distaste for my plan. Ezra, Piper, and even Alcar. They can all help too. Do I have your permission to proceed, General? With my permission. Can you please make out with me? Right here, right now. Please be cautious. I'm no wiser than you here. I cannot protect you if something goes wrong. I came here to make something of myself. I was so desperate to move out of the shadows of my parents. I come from a family that held me to such high standards. Standards I could never dream of meeting, no matter how hard I tried. I don't want this to be my legacy. I want to make the world a better place, not a scarier one. Oh my god, I love that! I gather that August has suffered through much frustration, and life has weathered them to the bone. They quickly gather themselves. I won't let you down. I don't doubt that, actually. Why won't you make out with me?! Upon entering the shop, I find... Chaos. I saw Ezra frantically gesturing at Omen. Oh my gosh, I forgot about Oikawa. <laughs> I managed to catch Ezra's eyes as he throws me a sympathetic look. He's stressed, his hand full of bandages and potions. What's happening? He mutters something quick and sharp under his breath to Omen, who then turns and stares at me with wide, sorry eyes at the witch disappears through his purple curtain. If I ask what's going on, will you give me an answer? The question seems to catch him by surprise. Then he looks away, his lips pursed. He doesn't seem to have forgotten his outburst with me yesterday, or his abrupt departure. Good, it isn't my intention to trip him with the reminder, but just as well that he remembers. Did you bring someone in who was hurt? Brown eyes snap at me almost instantly, and Almond moves as though to step between me and the entrance to Ezra's back room, then catches himself in the middle and forcibly drops his arms to his sides. He opens his mouth, stammers without speaking, then his shoulders droop in defeat. A little spark that might have caught on the bad digits rolls in his hand, peters out. Yes, but maybe you shouldn't see her right now. I mean, Toru, what did you do? He licks his lips. A flick of his black tongue visible. It seems so eerily out of place on a face so painfully human in its distress. At least let Ezra see to her first. He needs some space when he works his magic. I... Ezra kicks and giggles. I'm sure our guest is all right. <laughs> I haven't seen Omen this nervous before. And in the immediately brief time we've known each other, his fear sets me on edge. Carefully and deliberately, so as to not spook him. Yesterday's almost burn is still fresh in my mind. I step forward and put a hand on his arm, squeezing it gently. I'm sure our guest will be all right. Ezra is tending to them after all. Like, Omen blinks at me, then smiles and leans into my touch. <laughs> Visibly relaxed, he's a beacon of warmth in the cold roof. <laughs> Not funny. His power has grown tight to his core. I feel it under the clamor and the convincing illusion of fabric under my arm, but he won't let it loose. Won't let it hurt me. <laughs> he won't let it hurt me. <laughs> yes. Whoever they are, despite my gentle pro, he still presses his lips tightly together. For a moment, I fear I've caused him to clamp down again after all, but he takes a deep breath and very gently shakes me off. Another deep breath. Omen is stealing himself for something. I can see it. I decide to back off as well, giving him some space. He shoots me a glance, then hugs the items he is holding closer. And he speaks again. His voice is very soft. Hunter. Hunter's on your love. No. no. Oh, first day basis now, are we? I have something to tell you. What is happening? I'm listening. <laughs> Omen smiles. Oh, it's brief and weak, and also quick to appear like candlelight in a storm. His eyes lose focus as he begins to speak. Two years ago, I came to Lunaris. That is, I came to stay in Lunaris, after a disagreement with my sire, my father. He's got daddy issues. Oh my god. <laughs> my god. Oh my god. His eyes flicker around the room, almost nervously. I find myself straining to detect any eavesdropping presence, but there is none. Omen seems to find the same thing, because his shoulders droop again. You know what I am. I suppose you've already guessed. Hot? He sighs. Your people call him Lucifer, I think. The fallen divine. The Lord of Hells. Your dad is Satan? I <laughs> I am a child of God, sir. Oh my god. Not the forbidden enemies. <laughs> It takes me a moment to process what he said. Demon lore is plentiful and easily accessible when you're a hunter. Even in our early years of the academy. <laughs> Who's your mom? <laughs> it's just Castlevania all over again. <laughs> I would damn well hope I know who the Lord of Hells is. Are you kidding me? Oh, that is very nice. Omen's brown eyes widen. His jaw goes slack in surprise. The glamour truly is something. And I'm starting to wonder if he learned it from the witch behind the curtains. It is? He coughs. <laughs> that was sarcasm, wasn't it? <laughs> You're catching on, honey! Yes. That 
was not sarcasm. God, I can't deal with this. I just hear Toru. No, it was not. Something else also hits me. Our sire? Omen bites his lip. <laughs> and looks away. Then he nods curtly. Eyes flickering to the door leading into the shop. Well then, does your father know that you're here? In the mortal realm? Can he find you? A terrible thought crosses my mind. The burned bodies. The hunter. Oh, wait. The hunter's targeted. Wait. No! The, what in the world? Okay, I'll hate them much. The vehemence. That's a nice word. His denial is startling. I quickly hold up my hands for peace, but Omen isn't paying attention. He shakes his head vigorously, trembling. Jesus, no. homie, do you need a hug? No, that can't be him. Him or any of his minions. I would have known. I would have stopped them. Getting a little angy. <laughs> I can feel the fire in his core standing here. Far enough, anyway. And now that I know where it comes from, the familiarity of it makes sense. That's one hell of a secret to hold on to. And who is that in the back, then? One more colossal fact to add to this messy little mountain of information I have been gathering since stepping a foot in this mad town. What else is new by now? Omen closes his eyes and says something too quiet for me to hear. Then he breathes in, breathes out, and slowly makes his way to the counter. He sets all the items in his arm down. With such deliberateness, I know he is doing to calm his nerves. Something sneaks through, I still. I see a flicker of flame about his hair, an intensity to his aura, but only briefly. The pressure fades as Omen raises his head. He doesn't look at me as he speaks. I think I'll just head outside for some fresh air. You sure? Omen smiles at me over his shoulders, and the curve of his mouth tenses. I think it's for the best. I don't want her to see me like this. Rattled and angry. She's my sister. She doesn't deserve it. He trails off, staring in the distance for a moment. Then he shakes his head and makes for the door, only adding one last thing before he steps outside. Will you go and say hello to her? I'm sure Elaine will find you quite lovely. Okay. Oh, she's pretty. The second I lay my eyes on her, it's even more obvious that she's truly related to Omen. Maybe even his twin, unless the glamour is simply fooling me. I want her hair color, actually. This is like the perfect reddish brown. This is what I want. How do I give, give, give hair? Give hair? Give hair color to me. How are you, anyway? I huff a quick laugh because that question feels far too casual for the amount of information I've digested in the last mm, forever. Tired, confused, the usual. Oh my gosh, that is me! I wanted to apologize for not being totally honest with you and for making your life a little harder than necessary. You already have so much on your plate. I do. Thank you for noticing, finally. I spoke to August last night and Piper this morning. They know about the sash. Fear flashes across his features, but I quickly reassure him. It's fine, Ezra. They're on our side. They want to help. Even Gus? Yes, even August. Are you sure you're not magic? Because that seems like an impossible task. Well, they are in love with me, so... They just don't know it yet, but still. Incredible. Um, no, I feel like Ezra's my homie. I see him as like a little, like not like a little brother, but like... Friendzone! I'm gonna need your help along with a few of the others. Anything you need, I'm your guy. Well, magic-wise, anyway. Oh my, oh, my oh, my oh my god! Oh my god! Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. Good job. You sure laugh. <laughs> we would never date. <laughs> Piper and I are going into the dungeon to see if we can locate Aya. If we can talk to her, I think we might have a start. Everything leads back to when she was arrested, as far as I can tell. How on earth are you gonna get down there without being caught? That's where you come in. It may involve you and August working together. Does Gus know about this little plan of yours? I grimace, waving my hand in the so-so gesture. Mm, partially? You're lucky I trust you. And I'm here for you. Just tell me when and where. Thank you, Ezra. Now. How can I find Finn? Why, a secret passageway, of course. You're in the right place. Behold, opens up the floorboards. I remember the look for the third door on the left, just as Ezra instructed, but as I approach it, I find it wide open. Oh no. What the heck? This is a fire hazard right here. Oh, oh. <laughs> I peek inside. The stark contrast between the literal tomb outside and what I find is most definitely Finn's quarters is outstanding. Before I get the chance to take in the view, a cool breeze brushes past me. Whoa! This is a new character. She's bald! That's smart! Yes! <laughs> That's from Totally Spies. Oh. She's bald! Just imagine your character says that. She's, She's bald. bald! A small, darkly clad girl appears before me in a flash. Her eyes, the brightest crimson as they bore into me. She stands with her head tilted and toothy grin crossing dark lips. Are you lost, human? She stares me down. <laughs> Are you <laughs> I'm here to see Finn. Um, is he around? She relaxes at the sound of his name. Her striking gaze sweeps over me like a caress. She shrugs, pursing her lips. So you're the one he won't shut up about, hmm? Well, you do smell good, I guess. Smell good? Thanks, it's just Dove body soap. I don't know what to tell you. I'm... 
Is Finn here? She licks a fang, and I notice how similar some of her more human quirks are to his. She's far less poised than him, but I almost feel like that may be on purpose. I'm in Finn's territory here. Neutral territory, so I call the desire to be defensive, even though her eyes are the color of a creature who drinks human blood. He's somewhere here, around, doing stuff. Helpful. Her smile widens and she turns to poke a crystal decanter of whiskey that sits nestled in the corner of one of his many bookcases. Are you part of the clan? A quick nod, almost too quick to catch. I am. She pours the rich amber liquid into a glass, swirls it, sniffs it with a dramatic grimace, and sets it aside untouched. I wish that thing that you're looking for would stop killing hunters, you know? Because that means more of your type will come. And more enforcers, which is the last thing we need in this shitty town. I hear footsteps, loud ones that echo off the stonework in the hallway. Do, do, do. New jacket alert! Hey -o. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I suspect he knew I was here, but his shock is charming nonetheless. He looks at the girl who throws him a decidedly wicked wolfish grin. The picture of innocence. Raven? Are you being nice? Her name's Raven. So cool. The girl, Raven, shrugs, smiling up to him and resting her head on his shoulder. She rolls her eyes hard enough that I'm surprised I don't fall back into her skull. Yes, Dad? What? <laughs> Wait, no, maybe she's like being sarcastic, like, yes, dad. Like, oh. you know what I mean? Oh. Finn's face drops, his eyes narrowed. I get the impression that if he could blush, his cheeks would be the prettiest shade of pink. <laughs> Too bad he's dead. I stifle a laugh with obnoxious delight, Raven notices. We took that so seriously. <laughs> no. Raven. She laughs, the sound loud and obnoxious, but somehow still charming. She subs in playfully, but Finn remains stern. Are you gonna introduce me to your friend? The suggestive waggle of her eyebrows doesn't go unnoticed, and Finn sighs heavily. Offering me an apologetic smile. <laughs> this is Raven. She's more. I'm his kid. Okay, I cannot tell if this is serious or not. Are you a dilf or not? Are you father or father? <laughs> There's a low, exasperated rumble of a warning in Finn's throat, and I find myself enjoying the way he bristles in her presence. Finn throws her a death glare as she proceeds to look guilty, but just a little. He raises a single dark brow at her in a quiet scoff. She enthusiastically steps forward and offers me her hand. It's really nice to meet you. <laughs> you being in town has given Grumpy Pants here something to do, other than mope, at least. I do not mope. Okay. He wasn't hot, but now he's getting hot, and I can't deal with that. Not his chest is looking at you. I know! I'm no better than a man! Raven rolls her eyes and I finally take her hand. Her firm is grip, and I wonder if she might be trying to unnerve me when her startling eyes widen exponentially. Okay, we need to start taking shots for exponentially because that's like the third time they've used that. Hurt him and I'll eat you. Got it? I open my mouth and respond. Before I get the chance, she's laughing again. Finn looks mortified, and he carefully pries her hand from mine and ushers her towards the door. Time for you to go, I think. Raven pouts, raising both of her hands in defense. I was joking, obviously. I like her already. She offers me a little wave and rises to her tiptoes to press a kiss to Finn's cheek. He looks at her with unbashed fondness, a small smile creeping onto his lips. Go. Say hi to Lux for me and be good. He runs his hand over her scorned scalp as she swats at him playfully scoffing much like a teenager would him. Are you a dad? What is the truth? <laughs> Raven, we're sorry. Oh my gosh. Why? I liked Raven. She's nice. She said she would eat you. And with that, she's gone. The door slamming loudly and shaking in its frame. Finn groans, running an iron hand over his face as he walks to grab the whiskey Raven had poured him. She's interesting. She's your... He sips his drink. She's a pain in the ass is what she is. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> she's my pain in the ass. But does that mean she's your child? Am I going to become a stepmom? I sired her, so she's my oh, responsibility. Okay. So that she is jokes about child. me being her father, but what? Uh, I suppose I am, in a way. What do you mean sired? That, that Wait, means, that yeah. means like birthed? Uh, no. He takes a small sip of whiskey, savoring the taste for a moment before he speaks. So, oh, I prefer brother. Father just makes me sound so old. <laughs> Or... <laughs> His laugh is charming. Yes, old. She tends to look after me much more than I look after her. She's a good kid. I've been lost without her. I nod, observing him quietly as he sits down his glass. Sire bonds are powerful, and it's interesting to observe such casual, healthy dynamic. Did you choose to turn her? He frowns, shaking his head. Well, no, not exactly. It's complicated, but I made a choice that I'll have to live with forever. Literally. <laughs> I'd seen too many die at the hand of my sire. Something about her struck me. He planned to leave her for dead, but I couldn't.
couldn't let that happen. Chat is saying sire apparently means causing a pregnancy. Yeah, I've only ever yeah, but heard he's that term using it. Horses, though. <laughs> no. He smiles, and it's painfully earnest. We're kindred spirits, I guess. As much as I have regret for cursing her with immortality, she's the closest thing I have to a family. Now, what brings you to my neck of the underworld? He leans back against his desk. Oh God, I need you. <laughs> Listen, I did not want to, I was not planning, because I was strictly bros with him. But something about him being a father figure. <laughs> so real. I need you, girl. Alright, I need you. <laughs> he raises his scarred brow, his dark hair falling in his face as he turns to set aside his drink. You do, hmm? His smile has me rolling my eyes, and I quickly try to distract myself. Let me rephrase that. I need your help. Like, I have a plan. <laughs> you should have doubled down. <laughs> I have a plan I think you may be of use. He laughs, a raspy chuckle. I'm all yours, Hunter. Do with me as you please. Just tell me where and when. Um, right here on this bed, now. <laughs> <laughs> I clear my throat. The double entendre making my skin feel hot. He smiles, and I know the best can hear the unsteady heartbeat on my the unsteady flutter of my pulse. I can't even think right. Ah! I can help you, but I may have one favor of my own to ask if you're bold enough to venture down there. I narrow my eyes at him, contemplating if I want to tangle myself up in yet another web. What is it? He pushes away from the desk, standing tall. An important member of my clan has gone missing. I'm positive that they have him. As I'm sure you know, any trust for the enforcers is wavering. I want my friend back. He's done nothing to warrant being thrown in a dungeon. Okay, that works for me. You're sure he wouldn't just leave? Your clan isn't like others. Maybe he wanted a change. He looks frustrated. He runs his fingers through his hair, leaving it messy. The arrow wouldn't just leave. Continue. <laughs> I know he wouldn't. I trust him more than anyone else in my clan. Even Raven. We both suffered at the hands of Levi for centuries. We were healing from that together. Oh my gosh, they're besties. He was the only friend I had when I was with Levi. And he saved me more than once. I owe him this. If he's ash and bone in a forest somewhere, then so be it. But if he's okay, then I must save him. The only family creatures like me have are the ones that you find, so... I intend to keep them safe as long as I can. Respect. Call it morbid curiosity. Do you mind talking about him? About Levi? Finn grimaces, folding his arms across his broad chest. Yeah, they certainly are. His posture loses its usual confidence, I suppose. I take a seat upon his bed as he pulls out his desk chair. Oh. <laughs> First thing I think to ask him is loaded, but I need to understand. Why'd you stay with him for so long? He looks at me wide-eyed for a beat before he manages to formulate a response. I don't know if I can answer that. I still truly do not know. He was good at making sure you had nothing left to go home to. So he was all that I had. I'm not the kind of man who does well with loneliness. Me neither, homie. A wry smile crosses his lips, but Finn looks impossibly sad. What did he take from you? My Xbox 360. <laughs> it's not that funny. That was a knee slapper. Because I was gonna say Xbox. <laughs> Everything. He took my fiance, killed him right in front of me. Before He's he took bisexual! Oh, uh, wait, 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 how did the song go? I didn't exactly Jesus. have many Hold friends. Hold on, how was talking? Just interrupted him. He's an orphan, he didn't have any friends, and he killed his fiance. He's a pretty young, young girl. Yeah, a bisexual. <laughs> Could you break my headphones? Give me this. <laughs> I can't take you anywhere! Venaris is a cold, lonely shell that's daylight form tonight. I have to almost run to keep up with how quickly those shirtfully Alcar moves to the back alleys. The chill sinks to my bones, and unbidden, I wish I wasn't here. I wish I wasn't following a half werewolf towards more mystery. Omen's confession is still ringing in my ears, as do many other things. Did you know that Omen is- Alcar shakes his head, his welfare's flattening. Not here. Hey, did you know that Oikawa's a demon child? Not right now! Another turn and we step beyond the town's boundary. Trees loom above us. Night- Min oh my gosh! Moonlight flooding through the bare branches to afford us some light. Alcar leads me a little further away until the roofs of the houses are barely visible, then turns to me. A little while ago, I got into a fight with one of your hunters. Oh no! I was... <laughs> it was during a full moon. I had uh, an argument with my sister. Why does everybody have a sister in this town? It didn't go well. 
Do I have a sister in the sun? It's you. <laughs> I'm just somewhere. <laughs> he grimaces at the memory. And when I transform, especially if I'm upset, my control isn't as good as it could be. But I know I didn't kill him. What if Danwell remembered that? If you ripped a man apart with your own claws and teeth. Okay, um. But when I came to, he knocked me out, I guess. You hunters and your annoying little gadgets. Your enforcer friends were already swarming over us like hornets. But there was no blood. Not mine. Not his. So what's the problem then? If nobody died? That doesn't mean you didn't hurt him. Alcar gives me a look. Okay, smartass. The point is that he vanished. Poof. They, <laughs> the enforcers, dragged me off to their fun little dungeon and kept me there for fuck knows how long. A week, I think. Maybe more. Maybe it was too dangerous to just snuff me. Yes. I know too many people. Ezra, Finn. But here's a question for you. What's up? What do you do when a creature hurts a hunter so bad he apparently isn't walking around anymore. Uh, is this a rhetorical question? Perhaps Finn or Ezra parlayed your release. But Alcar is shaking his head. They didn't. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you hunters don't get retirement leave till you can't walk on two legs anymore. And even then... Well, there are always prosthetics. <laughs> Alcar barks a sharp, bitter laugh and shakes his head, but neither him nor I find humor in it. I didn't kill that hunter. I didn't. I won't forget something like that. And I... Enough. Never do it by accident. Never. Does Lieutenant General Addington know about this? Yeah, I think the one, he's the one who's campaigning for my release. So I owe him one, I guess. I have another question. Were you aware that Omen comes from hell? Alcar frowns at me, then squints, then snorts. Of course, where would he be coming from? The general store? Okay, mister. This man is the embodiment of the sassy man apocalypse. I don't need this attitude from you right now, okay? I'm trying to figure out who's doing all these murders. <laughs> I hope he doesn't hear the sound of my teeth gnashing as loudly as I hear it. But with the way his ears certainly stand up and cackle, I know he's seen something. I meant, did you know that he's the son of the literal devil? You were the one who didn't ask. You weren't giving me a chance to, as I recall. And why exactly should I have told you? Oh, in by the way, we've got a demon prince in town. He's easily spooked. But don't you worry about that because he's harmless. Like that would fly. Hey, why are you in... The microphone. This man is living in my ear. I- That was his secret to tell, and he didn't have anything to do with the mess he's been cropped up here, including that fact. Besides, as was the one who chose to offer him a place to stay, same as he offered to help me, help Finn, help anyone so much as looked like they needed it. Omen came to his door acting for aid. Why would he be so different than any of us? Than you, who he took in that night too. I can think of a few ways that Hunter might be different than all those things, but I cannot- I understand. The spirit of it. I understand. Alcar inclines his head in acknowledgement, his eyes sharp. It's more force than I've ever seen it from him. Good. <laughs> then he chuckles and leans away, significant that the conversation is at an end. You brought me to the woods for that? I when you need me, you need me. Until then, later. He disappears into the tree line, as sure-footed as ever. And once again, I'm left alone in this damn forest. I begin to make my way back to the wolf, my mind reeling again, as it always seems to be these days. Though I feel hopeful, my plan seems plausible, a little team of misfit helpers I've managed to assemble are more capable of carrying it out alongside me. I think. I smile to myself, feeling a little lighter than a rustle, something moving in the tree line, a little too close to the edge of town for my liking. Wait, advance. Pause. We need to assess the situation. I stand my ground quiet as I try to get a feel for what may be approaching. Can't get a read on its aura, but I know it's certainly not human. Then, it lumbers into view. It's hunched over, misshapen with long, gangly limbs that look out of place of its relatively normal-sized body. A single, twisted horn grows out of its head, and I spot three eyes. The third seems new and underdeveloped, and it melds crudely above the existing left socket. It's covered in patches of scraggly fur and scales, and in some places its skin is entirely burned off. An amalgamation of mis mismatched parts and pieces that look like they don't belong. That cloudy gaze meets mine and merely looks at it as giving me a headache. There's this weak, demonic aura that makes my body beg to look away. And something hits me. Something makes me hesitate to drop my weapon. I cannot place this feeling of complacency, of ease, and nor can I fight it. Is this how some of my comrades were killed so easily? Does this have some kind of power of us that makes us freeze, become immobile? Or... It's the dull ache of familiarity that settles in my gut that makes me pause. The feeling that I, sh I shouldn't harm it, 
that it deserves empathy, mercy. It opened its crooked jaw, melded sinew and molted skin, stretching and splitting it to reveal a set of violent, jagged teeth. My body screams at me to fight, but my feet are firmly planted and stuck to the forest floor. My fingers don't move. My weapon is still frustratingly safe in its holster. Girl, you're gonna die! Get out of there! It takes a purposeful step toward me with a low, rattling groan, its teeth bared. My heart races as I stare in its unfocused eyes, all three of them blinking out of sequence. There's a loud ringing in my ears, and I've never felt like this before. My instincts are screaming, pulsing, dying for me to do something, anything. And yet, all I can apparently do is stare down my bitter end. Then, boom, something washes over me, and in a split second, I gain perfect blinding clarity. Run, James. The creature takes another step and howls. A broken, blood curdling screech. Run! I listen. Gotta go fast. Pick your route. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, say. <laughs> As though my body already knows where I need to go, where I want to go, my feet carry me towards headquarters. I don't look back, but I do hear the rustle of trees and creatures maddening aura fading. It's heading back into the woods. The town is safe for now. Gotta go fast! I was right to assume August would be still in their office. Dull but inviting blue glow emanating from beneath the door as I round the corner. Is it time? Am I gonna get a kiss kiss? I don't think to knock. The door opens with ease as I press my palm to the wood. August stands quickly, startled by my entrance, the room aglow. What is it? They walk towards me. The report they were riding left a skew on their desk, their quill still dripping ink over the pain. I'm a hunter. This is my calling. My life. I've killed far bigger, far scarier things than this, so... So why do I feel this way? I take a deep breath, shaking and feeling ridiculous that this seemed to have affected me. I, I saw it, I think. The creature. <laughs> August reaches out, placing a hand upon my shoulder. Their touch is so soothing, enough to ground me and quell my unwelcome nerves. You hurt. I shake my head. Something happened. Like, there was this invisible force preventing me from attacking. I felt like... I knew it, August. They dropped their hand, running long fingers through their hair and turning to sit upon their desk. With a heavy exhale, their shoulders sink. You're here and you're okay. That's all that matters. They squeeze their eyes shut, wearing their bottom lip between their teeth. To think that something might have happened to you. To think I... A pause, and then a smile? <laughs> Okay, I'm confused. Laughter bubbles forth from their lips, an almost manic sound. And they open their eyes, their bright gaze meets mine, and August looks happier than I can remember ever seeing them. I find myself smiling in return, my brush with possible death forgotten when I look at them. The sense that with them, by my side, nothing can touch me. Uh, forgive me. I just find it entertaining that I could feel this way about someone I've known for a mere week. It's the YN effect, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> feel this way. A single dark brow climbs toward their hairline. The lightest flush appears on their cheeks. Like, I, I can't possibly imagine what it would be like without you here. <laughs> okay. Oh, funny, because somehow I feel the same. Like, everything points to August. Like, we'd be unstoppable if we were together. Forgive me if I spoke out of line. I know that was unprofessional. Their boldness seems to waver, then I step forward and stand between their long legs, the invitation too tempting to deny after their little confession. I can see the bob of their throat where they swallow, their knuckles bleeding white as they grip the edge of the desk! Oh my god! The room comes to life, and however jarring their unsteady magic may have been at first, I find myself becoming accustomed to it. Tell me to stop, and I will! I rest a tentative hand upon their thigh, and they shift in their spot. The unconscious movement is one of interest, not discomfort. Don't stop. <laughs> I reach to cradle their face in my hands, and it's hard to ignore the way they jolt in surprise at the contact, even though it's clearly anticipated. They quickly cool their momentary surprise, their lips parting as I tilt my head, moving forward so that our lips are brushing until the gentlest of kisses! Yes! August's bright eyes remain open and I wonder if they're unable to allow themselves to sink into the comfort of that. I wonder how long it's been since they've been touched like this. Okay, well... Ah! Let's go! I lightly brush my thumbs over their flushed cheekbones, feeling warmth blooming in the wake of my touch. Feeling like I'm a dream when they finally let go and open their mouth in welcome! Yes! Their fingers curl in the front of my shirt, and they smile against my lips, sending my heart swiftly to its knees. 
God. Okay. Without any further hesitation, August kissed me fiercely, reverently, and with everything they have. The room brightens around us, pulsing in time with their fluttering heartbeat. I pull away, but only just enough to get a look at them. Their dark lashes kiss the tops of their flushed cheeks. Their eyes still closed. They're lost in the moment. What? They cut off my words? Oh my god! <laughs> Swallowing them on their tongue when our mouths meet once more. The kiss is more urgent this time. Like August has been parched for decades and I'm the only thing that could possibly sustain them. Their fingers sink mine, lacing together and coming to rest at their side. We break apart, our chests heaving, and meeting August's vivid gaze makes my heart flutter. They're so beautiful, and possibly so, and they're mine. They're mine! All I do is win, yeah, win, yeah, win, yeah. no matter what. The woman was too stunned to speak. The woman was too stunned to- The woman was too- The woman was- woman. God, I am not your strongest soldier! <laughs> I anticipated change when you arrived, but- Smile. Wide, wide, wide. Nothing like this. They shake their heads, squeezing my hand. You were... Unexpected. I laugh, because- Well, yes. Unexpected is one way to put it. Falling for my enforcer was never on the cards but August is something I cannot resist. They're so fine! So, what now? That was everything on the desk. <laughs> when I look at them, I see how far they've come. In such short time, they found humility and courage to allow themselves to be vulnerable, to question everything they thought they knew and take a stand. We're all frightened, but August makes me want to be brave to dig deeper and uncover whatever secrets fester within. He shrugs, a gesture that looks strange on them, but they look happy. We save Lunaris, I suppose. Everything is going to be okay. <sighs> Thanks, I really want a smile on my face. Okay, wait, okay, wait. <laughs> All right, let's see what this does. Hot stuff! Although my body has already knows where it needs to go, where I want to go, my feet carry me towards Edward's shop towards where I hope Omen will be. I'm not calling him Omen, I have to call him Waikawa. I don't look back, but I do hear the rustle of trees and the creatures manning the yeah, we know, the town's safe, for now. <laughs> Around the corner, my feet sliding on the icy cobblestones, as if the universe knows exactly what I need this moment. Got Omen lurking outside the stop. He's pacing beneath a dully lit mage light lantern. He spins when he hears my approaching footsteps, flames licking at his shoulders and framing his handsome face. <laughs> what is it? I grab his arms, he steadies me while I catch my breath. I think I just saw the creature. He's shaking his head, his brows furrowed, his tails curling around my waist. Oh my god, okay. Mm. 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 This better not awaken anything in me. Alright, Toru. Just breathe. I nod, heeding his advice and inhaling a shuddering breath. I've never felt like this before. I'm all too encountering all the nasty things that go bump in the night. Nothing usually phases me. Not after years of this, but this was different. It did something to make me freeze. Like I was paralyzed. Where is it now? Something flashes in his eyes, something powerful. My mind wanders the thoughts of what he might look like without that glamour, and I decide that this creature would be nothing compared to him. It retreated into the woods. I'm lucky to be alive. You can't get hurt. I wouldn't forgive myself. He looks away, clearly trying to calm himself. I steal my gaze and stare him down. He's been through so much today. He revealed his truth to me. Without a doubt, it took guts. The fear he must have felt that he wouldn't be accepted. I find myself inexplicably drawn to him over and over, Wanting to be near him, wanting to see him smile. Even after what I've just seen tonight, all my fears melt away now that I'm in his arms. I'm in his arms? I don't know why I'm- I don't know why I'm- I- this is- I signed up for this. <laughs> his warmth sinks right down to my bones, stifling the cold bite of the Lunarian air. I should be scared of him. His strength and standing is one that cannot match, but... When he looks at me with those big brown eyes, I find it hard to see him as anything other than just a man like any other. With added tail and teeth, of course. Omen. Oh, no. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Would you mind if I kissed you? I can be an actress. <laughs> he takes a tiny step forward, looking down at our touching toes, then back at me. I'd like it if you did. God. What is happening? What is happening? I shift closer again, smiling as our noses brush. Then I kiss him. It's something chaste and fleeting, but meaningful all the same. His lips are as warm as the rest of him, soft and pliant against my own. His cheeks are a delightful shade of scarlet when we break apart, his eyes wide and shining as the gentle darkness. The smallest smile crosses his pink lips. I 
thank you. I stare at him, still holding him firmly, the silk of his shirt so soft beneath my fingertips. Did you just thank me for kissing you? <sighs> he clears his throat, tail swishing back and forth, back and forth, then a quick, sharp nod. Yes? I purse my lips, wondering if I ever figure out this strange demon. Then I think how exciting it might be if I don't. Well, okay then. <laughs> You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. He laughs, and his tail returns around my waist. This man is never letting me go. It coils tightly, squeezing once. Okay, that's kind of hot. Uh <laughs> really, though, thank you. You've made me feel so at home. Gonaria? Gonaria? Is that your native tongue? I see the tip of his blackened tongue dart out briefly as he misconstrued my question, his eyes flashing red when he registered what I really meant. Yes, it is. I can teach you if you like. I slowly drop my hands from his arms, lacing our fingers instead. I find myself getting used to his warmth. It's like standing too close to a fire when you've been freezing all day. Yes, I'd like that very much. No, I, I can't. I look up at the low hanging moon, smiling at myself. Then I look at him. Everything will work out, won't it? Yes, I believe it will. I believe in you. My job might... Oh my god. <laughs> my job might sometimes mean I must kill without hesitation. An omen is from a place where all evil is rooted. But he's not cruel as I presume his sire to be. Though I'm here to keep the people safe from harm, Lakala is the perfect example of a creature who would otherwise be feared and blindly hunted just because of his origins. Something he didn't choose. Instead, he chooses to be kind. I believe in you too. He smiles, his tail tight around my wrist. Okay, I'm not going anywhere, homie. Can you, like, it's, it's hot. It's hot. It's, I will say it, it's hot. Okay, it is hot. I'm just very confused right now. No longer are we alone, but we have a family. What? What the fuck? Everything is going to be okay. Seriously, I'm waking with a smile on my face. Oh my god. <laughs> Although I'm sure he's aware it's me, he still seems surprised when he opens the door and finds me in the dull light of the corridor. Yeah. Are you okay? I can see him registering that something isn't right. He gently curls his fingers around my wrist to urge me inside when I don't respond, the door closing with a loud thud behind me. Strangely, I'm shaking, and I can't quite place why. What is it? Who hurt you? I only wanted to have been asked that question. Oh my god! I'm rarely fearful of creatures, but this one shook me to my core. Something was off. Too familiar. I saw it. Golden eyes meet mine, and the warmth that exudes calms me in an instant. Breathe. I've got you. Now, tell me. What did you see? I shiver as my adrenaline fades, and in an absent-minded gesture, he rubs its hands over my arms to try and warm me. The creature. I think I saw it. I couldn't move. It was like it paralyzed me. There was something that didn't feel right. Like I knew it. Like we were connected? His brow furrows and he takes a step closer as I reach for his arms. I hold onto him as he might anchor me and make all this feel real. I was drawn here. Something magnetic pulling me toward him in a time of confusion. Well, actually, Bessie, you had the choice and I did two other ones, so I went with the last hottie that I wanted to make out with. That's why you're here. I've barely known him for a week, but there's something about Finn that makes me feel strong and safe and wanted oh my god this is stop calling me out we should go out there see if we can find it i can practically see the cogs turning in his mind as he moves to leave i tighten my grip i need him to stay i want him to stay i want him right here right now on that bed let's go you don't need to sleep why do you even have it unless it's for finn in the warm light of his room finn's face has taken on an otherworldly quality the way the golden shadows dance across his sharpened features makes me wonder how many people he's lured to their end. I wouldn't blame him. Even I'm drawn to him like a mouth to a bright, bright flame. And there's truly no mistaking that he's not human. Deadly. And yet, another step closer. My heart, a hammer in my chest. And we're so close I can feel his cool breath against my overheated skin. <laughs> the unsaid longing. The desire that I feel when I'm near him. Something I've tried to quietly sniff out. Using the formalities of my position as an excuse. A creature. Something I'm supposed to hunt, but he's the one whose presence has made me feel like I truly belong here. Comfort in all this darkness and uncertainty. Uncertainty? I'd mark myself a fool if I ignored such feelings. Everything can end tomorrow and I never know. I tilt my chin in invitation, my chest heaving, and surely my grip would be bruising if he weren't human. He curls a cold fingertip at my cheek, and I know he's not reading my mind, but his next words are still everything I long to hear. Can I kiss you? Yes! Oh my- Yes! Yes sir, you can! Yes! That's all it takes for Finn to press his cool lips against my willing mouth. He places a hand upon my hip and draws me close. Yeah.
The first kick it- the, Oh my gosh! The first quick- Oh my gosh! The first kiss is quick, but it still lingers when he pulls away, his eyes desperately searching my face. I exhale sharply, a beat passing between us. Then, I kiss him with fervor, my tongue finding his between carefully parted teeth. Eventually, I need to pull away to catch my breath, and I'm overwhelmed by how right this feels. He smiles when he realizes I need to breathe, giving me a moment to place a kiss against my jaw, trailing it back towards my mouth. Ah! I hold him close, pushing my hands up over his spine, raking my nails along the dark fabric. I can feel his muscles shift and relax beneath my touch. Oh my god! Then a shared smile, and Finn kisses me hard, feeling the urgency that thrums between us, kickstarting something within me that makes my breath hit. I hear a low growl, oh my god, a rumble in his chest. It's a revealing noise, the kind that seems alarming at first, but that gives way to approving. Throaty groan, oh! Oh my gosh! Okay, damn, Finn, get it! He carefully walks me backward until I hit the door. With an unexpected complacency, I find myself following his lead and sinking back against the wood. You have a thing with walls and doors, don't you? Girl! He makes a quiet noise, it sounds like a little purr! I cannot resist reaching out to drag a hand down to the plural plane of his exposed chest, and Finn is clearly drinking in the way my fingers feel upon his skin. He's reveling in the attention. We pause, forehead, press to forehead. The fathomless gold in his eyes burn into mine. My own. My reading ragged, clawing free from the embers of my chest, and I smile. That's it? I'm turning from my dead grandma's photo. She can't see the dead grandma. Sucks a sharp breath, smiling and looking at me at like I hung the moon. Oh my god. The words that roll off his lips are raw and honest. I bear lay before me and washing away whatever hesitation I may have felt before this moment. You were like a madness. One I'd happily succumb to. Oh my god! <laughs> This mission has been nothing but one mystery after another, but this he reveals gently and passionately. We reluctantly part, and Finn steps back, putting some distance between us. Though our fingers are still lazily intertwined, the feel of his cooling over my overheated skin. Oh my god. <laughs> he smiles, turning and breaking our contact as he takes a seat upon his bed. So, um, <clears throat> this changes things between us, I suppose. In this timeline, yes! I clear my throat, unable to wipe the smile off my face. His kiss lingers. You could say that. He looks up at me and I find myself caught by how beautiful he is. Tell me everything will be okay. He feigns consultation, his gaze, flicking to the side, then back to my face. It will. You're smart and you're strong. And I consider myself lucky to be able to help you. Lucky to know you. That's all I've ever wanted in a man. There's so much uncertainty, but of him, I'm beyond certain. Grounded and stronger. Know you me and know me you do. He laughs, biting his bottom lip. <laughs> his support makes me feel unstoppable, as it ever else is, but mainly his. No longer alone am I in this. I have a family. Okay, so wait, is that what I mean? But when I say family, like I have these friends that are like my family, like I'm not or did I get sired again? Crazy, I was on the foul, I mean! <laughs>